So I am going to open up the floor for Q and A because that's what this is going to be a Q and A. Um, we will touch on certain topics or subjects if you like, but most is going to be Q and A because I know that people are probably hungry, thirsty. We've been on OS and Vision. There's a whole wealth of questions that are coming through there, um, you know. And um, our brothers um, and sisters are doing a great job keeping that alive and that momentum going. You know, student teachers are collaborating together and and just hitting them, hitting answers upon answers, questions, answers, question, answers when we have that time, you know, um, and it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And let's keep up that momentum. Let's become sticky as what we say in our language, Moisar. Okay, sticky, united, and in one mind. Okay, so I open up the floor. If anyone has a question, please ask away. Can I ask a question about soulmates? Of course you can, my sister. Um, I know a little bit about it, but how does the African or Nuwapian, um concept work among soulmates or twin okay. planes? Right, okay. Um, so where have you first and foremost read about soulmates? What 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 um, publication have you read? Um, the Black Root Science. Okay, I'm familiar with the Black Root Science um, doctrine to some degree. Um, I'm just gonna bring up Patarat Soulmates. Okay, and I'll read it from there as how the master put it. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down. And this is from Soulmates by Pana Babianun, um, master teacher. And I'll read from here. Verse one, Likum Mare Nuwapu, Beloved Nwapins, you wish to understand what Taba'a, nature says, is your soulmate. Notice it says nature says, yeah? What is in fact a soulmate? Verse 3. When Ka'at Tui, two spirits, become one Ba'a, soul. Number 4. And as such produce perfect Mu'achachach, or Ethereans, or etheric beings. This comes with wakot time and patience. Six, taba'a, nature, does its part by the rules of attraction. Seven, and both persons must do their part by living up to what's expected of them. This becomes as perfect as those involved. Verse nine, nuwapu nuwapin, this is the way of wu nuwap. The continuity of our existence is for male as being, as being, female as material, and time as akal mind. Since mind is time and is the continuation of both nata wu nata tat god and goddess, it's about the continuing of being, of being, material and mind, and akal mind as time is that is constant and needs to express its being as it exists without movement or as nothingness, yet as continuity expresses through material or matter, which is existence in movement, somethingness. Verse 16. So you have male being, female material, and time mind, the perfect union. Verse 17. Mind is male, is constant, and female is variant, ever changeable, transforming, shape shifting to attract the mind of the male to become soulmates. Okay, so I'll leave it there, and I hope that kind of like gives you an insight into what a soulmate is. So it's by nature's forces, okay, two beings coming together who are living in accordance with natural nature. Yeah, because when I read the Black Rose Science, because um, I know there's a difference between a soulmate and a twin flame. Mm. And for what Black Rose Science says, that the twin flames come from the same spark and the soulmate are kind of like separate. So the twin flames are basically connected before in past lives. And so mm. they, they come together from that same spark. And a mm. soulmate is someone that's a friend that, you, you know, doesn't stay in your life for, you know, for a long time. But with a twin flame, it's, it's from the same creation, the, the same spark. Is that correct? 
Um, we all generate from this one one individual source, one source, which is Papa Ot. So the many different multiple lives that you may have existed, you may have had someone in your past life that you may meet again in this life. Do you understand? And that can that can happen, not as often, but it does happen. But essentially, it's it's what what is expre being expressed here and explained here is that if you are living in what is as natural in accordance with natural nature as much as possible, you attract. That's what it's about attracting that particular same resonant frequency or same resonant energy to you. Do you see what I'm saying? And nature brings you together, and ultimately, it's about the existence of another. Uh, you know, or continuity of your existence. So then you would then produce a child who will become that golden child. You see what I'm saying? Because you've perfected your being, she's perfected her being, and then you produce a child who will be in the image and likeness of you. Yeah, another universe, as it were. And then that will then carry on the continuity cycle. You see? But I'm not familiar with the, um, what, what, um, was it called um, black, black science. science? Yeah, is referring yeah. to about the that spark, etc. Yeah. And so if that, like, for example, if you mm. say so you can connect with someone and um, you remember each other from past life, but you were different opposite sex, can can that happen as well? Yeah, yeah. Because remember, it's not about really about the gender. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not. It's not about the physical gender. It's about the mm -hmm. spirit, the essence of you. Yeah. yeah. Once, once you, because we're also ultimately when you're out of this skin suit, you're just energy. You know what yeah. I mean? So two energies are supposed to come together and become one energy. So yeah. if you're on that same re resonant vibrational frequency and are raising yourselves together, you know, you you do um, certain practice, you're meditating together, you're you know, you chant together, you you know, eat foods that are healthy for you. You get what I'm saying? And, and all these different aspects of your strengthening your spirit and your soul, ultimately you will then become one being. You, you see what I'm saying? And yeah. that's that's true soulmate. Can you can you elaborate on the golden child again, please? Right. So a golden child is is literally when um those spirits or those essence of that child, okay, is of, of soul purity that they give birth to a golden child who has the ability to open certain doorways, like gateways. Mm. So that's what a golden child is. And how do they open certain gateways? They have something known as a double resonant frequency. So they they operate in this realm and they also operate in the etheric realm. So like for instance, the, the two soulmates that came together would be an example, be Nefertui Tui and Arkan Arten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. they they were known as gate gateway openers, gate gatekeepers. Now, Akan Arten had a mate who gave birth because she carried the known something called the Maf Kuzat, yeah, which is the liquid gold, mm -hmm. and that was um, his mother. I think is what her name. I think Kia. I think it's Kia's her name. I, I, I might be corrected on that. But um, essentially, she carried the Maf Kuzet. And between her and Ankan Aten, when they met and had a child, they gave birth to a golden child. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, and that golden, that's why Tut Ank Amun is represented with that mask, because he represented the hidden being that expresses, that comes forth, you know, and, and um, is able to then open up certain realms of existence but he that was cut short when they poisoned him and he in, ended up you know um transitioning okay thank you you're welcome my sister okay any further questions on that particular topic or anything else let me just jump to clubhouse any questions on clubhouse uh, hi I have a yeah, go ahead, my brother. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to uh, intrude or anything or try to join you guys are speaking. This is my first time in, in you guys' clubhouse, so... No, that's just, fine, that's fine. Uh, Welcome. Um, first question is, um, do you guys have any any centers or any facilities down in South Florida? 
I I am not familiar with that, but if you go to our website, unitedsabiansworldwide.com, there's a list of, of stores. And um if you look through there or yeah. or you have you have you looked through there? Have you gone on the website? Yeah, I, I, I did. I you did, couldn't I find anybody. Have you Okay, have you called the office? I've called, but uh, it, it, it just rings. Oh, okay. I, I, understand, I understand it's a busy... It's, 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 yeah. It's, 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 um, if you... I don't know whether there's somebody, one of the administrators might be able to, or if we look into it for you, we might be able to find... Because I know there is a, a chapter as such in Florida, but I'm not too sure whereabouts. You with me? Because there, there's been mention of it when we have our tribal meetings and, and stuff. But uh, whether it's been activated or whether there's a store there, that's what I'm not familiar with. I'm not too sure if there's a store. Well, I, the, the reason why I asked is, is also because I have a, I'm, I'm new on Clubhouse, but I have a bit of an influence though in this area. And I know people of influence. Okay, and, um, okay. This, this, this message is not necessarily... It's just not. It's not over here. You know what I mean. This right. Information is not down here. Right. You, 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 I mean, well, you, you, you have, you have a gentleman named Billy Carson that lives down here. Right? Okay. Okay. You know what I mean. And, and unless, unless you kind of like search mm. and, and, and drive and dig for the for this type of information, mm -hmm. it's not. It's not put amongst us. Okay. The youth. Okay. You know what I mean. So, um, I'm just trying to figure out like a means to kind of. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, I understand. You know what I mean? You, this, this, I'm new to this. Yeah. So, but but I but this is this is who this is a part of who I am. Okay. Le uh, is it how do you pronounce your name? Lewi or Levi? How would you pronounce it? It's Louis. 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 Yes. Back channel me. Give me your details. And what we can do, we can plug you into our Sabian classes and store over here in the UK. And then with some means of shape or form, we'll be able to try and connect with you and, and see if we can um, get the ball rolling. Whether you're able to, I don't know, if, you're, if you've got some kind of influence, you can start classes and we can then maybe brothers in, in the area or in another state can come and help or sisters can come and help. But yeah, if you leave your information, back channel me and then we can at least start something. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll do that now. Um... Yeah, so I guess I guess you and I will be able to have a, a different conversation at a different exactly, time. Now, exactly. I just, I, I'll let you. I'll let you do your thing. Um, All right. To, no problem. So, so what we say is tawatak, which is thank you in our in our ancient African language, known as misbatia. I'm sorry. Can you repeat it one more time? Tawu tawatak tawatak. It means thank you it, when I'm addressing a brother. For sure. For sure. Okay. okay. All right, you're welcome. And I appreciate you tuning in. No problem. All right. Okay. Um, how you doing, Robert? Right. So any um we we move on. I mean, I can still read from the golden child for those who want to hear a bit more. You know, um I'm sure you would. <laughs> there is a question on Zoom, Zama. Okay, this is okay. Tell tell uh, Zama Tat. Um let me jump jump to it. Could you read it out if if possible, Zama Tat? It says, can a soulmate be a different race to you? If no, can they be mixed? And one of the races they're mixed with is the same as yours. Okay, let's break that apart. So first one is, if they're not of the same race, can they have a soul and you'd be soulmates? Yeah? Tua. Is that the first part of the question? Tua. Okay. Okay, what it is is that when you're dealing with different levels of um, species or different species, okay, different species have their own, um, let's just say, morphic genetic and resonant frequency, okay? As being Nagaru, we've, we're nine ether beings, okay, that predominantly would have soul. In saying that, you have Caucasians who have mixed in, and if they're of that of a race, and they potentially may not have a soul. In saying that, Nagarus nowadays also are losing their soul. So if let's just take it into the premise that their two Nagaru has a soul, 
and the other person also potentially may have a soul. Then as soul beings, they come together, okay? But their etheric, their etheric root race is not the same. You with me? It's like a, it's like a, um, an, identif an identification mark. So if they're not of the same resonant frequency or soul nature, okay, the compatibility would not work. Do you understand? Because of the fact that we are of different makeup. Our matrix is different to that of a European or Caucasian. Yeah, so the level of soul that they may have is not the same as a Nagaru may have. Does that make sense? Okay, to the question that's been asked. And the other part, if you're mixed, is again, potentially, if we're dealing with just a pure being and we're dealing with just soul, if you're mixed and you have a Nagaru mother or father and that soul is there, that child would inherit the soul by way of those two parents. If they were to then end up mixing and the corrupting of their soul, then they can lose their soul. It's more about the fact that the energy that you have as a being, okay, becomes corrupted. What the masters explain is that there, there were beings known that were created that we teach are the Adamites. Okay, when the Adamites were created, they had soul. But what happened was other beings came in and mixed up their species with, with um, lower vibrational creatures. Excuse yeah, me I, some more, Rahubat. Yeah, hi, Rahubat. I'm just stepping out just for five minutes, okay? So it was that, my sister? I'm stepping out for five minutes. I'm going to step oh, back here. Okay, 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 no worries. Okay, thank you. Yeah, do what you want to do, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so with, with that in mind, okay, when the Adamites then um, ended up mixing in with the Canaanites, who are your Caucasians that were already mixed in with other creatures, they forfeited their, their soul. You with me? Because it's an energy that can, can get lost. So with their soul, it got trapped or they lost it and it's been trapped in certain levels of um, realms, certain realms. Like, for instance, the Mukasu or the Caucasian male he doesn't have a soul. His soul is trapped in the lower realms of, of, of existence, okay? The, with the Mukasu female, the Caucasian female, she has the ability to inherit a soul because she can shape change. She can actually move up levels based on her mitochondrial DNA that she has, okay? So when it comes to soulmates and, you know, um, mixing of energies, it's very... Um, it's a testy area because you're dealing with different formulas and different matrices. The most important thing is to find your own race and mixing with that race because then you strengthen and continue your race in the purest and healthiest way. Because when you're dealing with energy, energy has different potencies and you're more than likely, you're going to you'll weaken that particular child if you were to mix so the potency would not be as strong as that of a Nagaru. That's, I hope that makes sense. So physically, um, as a Caucasian, and physically as a Nagaru or African or a black person, mixing your DNA is not something that we advocate because it's not just the mixing of the DNA, it's the mixing in also of the energies. Okay, your spiritual energies or your ether energy, it gets weaker. Okay. And if you're male, sorry, if you're female and you mix in with a Caucasian, for instance, a Caucasian male, you actually lose your etheric energy, your etheric potency. So we wouldn't really advise it, but if you're already in a relationship and you have that already and you have a child, etc., and they are mixed race, just know that the etheric energy is not as potent as that of a Nagaru. Okay. I hope that answers your question on that. I think there was a, I've never gone further to that, wasn't there, Zamata? Two. Uh, what was the third question, third part of that? It well, um, I think this is from Mumi. Uh, it says, what if they're from different African culture? Yeah, Does that, that matter? That, that, yeah, that doesn't really ascribe mm. the culture aspect. What more ascribes is your level of who you're connected to. 
You with me? So for us, we're nine ether beings and when the etheric potency in us, okay, and the connection that we have is that we were given this divine essence known as the soul, okay? And the soul is that essence of you that links you back to your ancestors, their realm, and allows you to travel back to them, you see? So when you start to mix in with other races, especially those who have um, lessened their DNA or lessened their genetic matrix, which is also in, entwined with their soul, okay, you are basically weakening your energy um, essence in order to just have a child or be able to, I don't know, have, have a relationship, yeah? So it's not really about that. More, It was more about the fact that when you're mixing your, your um, DNA with somebody else of the same race, you're, you're making it more potent. The whole aspect of it is to make it more the potency of it so that you can then have more connection with natural nature, with your ancestors, and also be able to traverse the different realms of existence in order to then go to other worlds, etc. But what's happened is that through the 6,000 years that we've been in existence in this cycle, most of us have lost our soul. So, and in losing your soul, you no longer have the link that you have with your ancestors. And that's why through all this information known as Wu Sabat, what it's doing is it's like a, a battery that's kickstarting that electrical spark. It's sparking you to the point where your soul is rejuvenated again. You see, and once you're, you're, you're like a battery in the car is kickstarted, the whole, the whole engine will start to run properly. You with me? And imagine if I give the analogy of a car, you're putting the, the best fuel in the car, you with me, and you're treating the car correctly, then the car will go a further mileage. As opposed to if you put the wrong fuel and the wrong inf things in the car, and you drove the car badly, etc., then the car won't go as far. So it's a bit like mistreating our essence just because you say you love that individual or you want to be with that individual. But it wasn't, it wasn't about that. It was more about your essence and where um what you can do when you move onto the different realms and how you can able to keep nature in balance. This is what it was about. It's always about keeping nature in balance and being in tune with your ancestors who can give you certain information so that you can continuously exist. Because the reason why they exist is because we exist and we must remember them, you see. And in mixing your seed and your divine essence, you start to forget who they are and to the point where you're in other people's um, state of mind, other people's energies, you know, practicing other people's cultures and lifestyles. And this is not what we advocate in Wu Sabat, you know. So mm -hmm. the science and the knowledge of Wu Sabat is for everybody to practice within their natural um, arena what they should practice, not to converge the two or the three and mix it all up to the point where it becomes polluted. Do you understand? So I, ho I hope that answers your question. Uh, another question on Zoom, Zaman? Yep, go ahead. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's from Selkett. Okay. So are you saying that the Adamites were black? At yeah. one point, mm -hmm. I thought this was the case. Then I'm not sure it was said that they were Caucasians. No, Okay. What has happened is that first, let's establish the word Adam. Adam just means human being or of, the, of this realm. Okay, so that's what Adam is purely pertaining to, a being who is of this realm or this um, earth. That's an Adamite. So anyone here on, on this realm is an Adamite in that sense. Okay, now there's a specific species that were created from different species. The reason why I'm using species because when we get into the race thing, black and white, th that is not a race, yeah? We're, it's all really all about species. So there's different species of cats, there's different species of monkeys, but they're all apes or felines. Does that make, does that, um, make sense? So within the different species, you have the root races. The root races are the Nagaru or African, you know, for the lack of a better word. And then you have the Dravidians. And then from the Dravidians, you also have the 
Mangalu or the Asians. So within the Asian, the Dravidian, and the Nagaru, those were the th three root races. Now, from the first root race, the African race, all the DNA was taken and extracted, okay? And the mixing in of certain beings that were on the planet at that time, known as the um, Pataites, or for the lack of a better word, pygmies, they, their DNA was extracted, okay? And from the extraction of their DNA, it was made and grafted to become your Adamite species. This is all in, encapsulated in your biblical story, but it's been misrepresented and mis, you know, the misinformation is there. So people think Adam and Eve were the first people, et cetera. So that's what religion comes in. But essentially, you had two species of people on the planet, the Hindus, and they had subspecies of them. One of them were the what known today as the Watusis, okay, of, of, of Africa. Yeah. Then you had another one known as the Pataites of Africa. And in their DNA, the genes were extracted. And then another extraterrestrial gene, which you 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 probably know nowadays, known as the Anunnaki. Okay, they came in and they I can say they binded their characteristics and their genetic makeup onto the existing primordial man or indigenous being of this planet. Okay, who, who are your Patites? So between the combination of the Watusi or the Dravidian and the Patites and then the Anunnaki and then further on still the Pleiadians they all mixed their DNA and binded their genetic chromosomes onto the original species on the planet who were the African race, okay? That produced, from that tribe, the um, Adamites, okay, who became a tribe of their own. So that's where your, your Bible story picks it up and it says, um, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, because this was actually referring to extraterrestrials who binded their genetic makeup onto the original beings that were on the planet, okay? Then it says, let us make man in our image. Then it says, male and female created he them and called their name Adam, you see? So their name, it was not a one particular individual called Adam. It was a plural, their name. So they became a species or a tribe of themselves. And from that tribe, because they were from the African gene pool, they also inherited the characteristics of the African, which was the dark skin or light skin, because we have different hues. Okay, so Eve, as the master explained in many of um, the publications and shown images of, she was a light skin hue. And then Adam, or his real name, Zakar, he was created of a particular hue of the African gene pool mixed in with the Dravidian, who are also dark skin and has straight hair. So Adam, um, as described in many of the old publications, he had straight hair or wavy hair, known as eight ether, and Eve had um, nub Nubian hair or, or nine ether hair, okay, which was a bit more curly, etc. She was shown with braids, but in essentially she, had, she was more of nine ether. Okay, and from those two children that were bred, as Adamites, they were of African um, origin. Do you see what I'm saying? Because the root DNA was of African origin. Now, moving it on, after they mated with each other and produced their children, those other extraterrestrials that came on board and mixed their DNA with those Adamites, okay, and produced your Caucasians. And one of them is by way of a child called Canaan in your Bible, or you find him in the anthropology as the Cro-Magnon. Yeah, the Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthal, and there's another um, anthropological word for him, Neanderthal, and there's, there's two, isn't it? Cro-Magnon, yeah, the Cro-Magnon and the Neanderthal. Those are your two that were produced, okay? When you go into the scientific um explanation for those particular species 
Yeah, so when you go into archaeology and anthropology, that's the roots race. Then when you go into um, archaeology and anthropology, you find the Homo naledi, okay, and the Homo habilis, and you find other um, species that branched off from that, okay, and the original beings that would have been us, okay, which had um, I think it's Homo, is it Homo habilis? I've forgotten the name. I mean, so Ken knows this off the top of my head. I hope you can add it to Ken because I can't. I always forget which yeah, order correct. it goes in. So you got um, Homo um, habilis, which is I think I'm pretty sure is the African root race, and then you have from that you gave um, from that branching off gave birth to the Dravidians, who would have been the Homo naledi, and another one I can't remember, I always forget the name. I think for, um, Francis is another name. So Homo naledi and Homo Francis, I think were the Asian stock, okay, or, spe or species. So no. from those particular then then the Sovan. Then it's Sovan. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that, tell Asimov. I always forget that one. Yeah. So the Denis Sovan is another of the Asian stock. Okay. So you have different species that were on the planet. And what's happened is that when extraterrestrials mixed in with them, um, that produced your Canaanites or your Caucasian race by way of Canaan. And then your the reason why we refer to a lot of the biblical references is because it actually tells you sp some part of their story in the Bible, but they make it seem like it was just a, a curse that was given. But it was actually a genetic experiment that was being done by extraterrestrials known as the Pleiadians. OK, so what they would do is that they would intercept every so often the genetic pool or the genetic lineage of that particular Adamite species. And then from that interception, that produced your different hues of what we call today the Caucasian race. And so Canaan was the first born albino, okay? The first born albino to the African um, branch of the Adamite species which would be your Noah story, okay? Then what happened was Canaan, he then left that family and moved to a higher region and mixed in with the beings that were there that produced your 11 tribes of Canaan, okay? This is all your biblical references, but essentially these tribes are your tribes today known as the Celtics, you know what I mean, the Vikings, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so all of these different tribes and families are your European or Caucasian race. When Canaan, okay, the biblical name for him, he moved into the Caucasus Mountains, okay? And you find this in um, Genesis where it talks about Canaan going into the Caucasus Mountains and then having 11 children, one of them becoming the Amorite, the Horite, the Girgashite, the Hivite, et cetera. These were just different tribes. But when you actually look into his history, okay, the historical references for the Amorites and the Gigashites, et cetera, you find that these are your modern day Jews, okay, your um, modern day Americans or European, like the Scandinavians, et cetera. Uh, yeah, and this, this mixture um, in the caves of, 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 of Europe, you find um, another species that were there originally that were produced by another stock of ex experimentation that happened. And this would be your flugorods. Okay, so there's a lot that goes, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to your Adam and Eve story. But essentially, this is what produced. So originally, you know, to go back to your first question, they were of African stock. Okay, but it was a graftation. So there were dark skin, woolly hair, Adamites originally, and then through the mixing in, that became your Caucasian race of today. So there are beings today that some may have a soul, but the Adamites lost their soul. And then what happened was they started to mix in with other creatures on the planet. And other extraterrestrials also then, let's just say they partook of that mixture and produce more sub-races of your, of your Caucasians. 
So that's why they're also known as the Adamites as well. Okay, and you have to look at also what the word means. The word itself also means um, red, red, ruddy, blush skin. So when you go and look at the word today in the in the etymology of it, you see the word Adam means red, ruddy, blush, pale to light skinned. Okay, that's what the actual word means in etymology. So I hope with that explanation, it kind of clears up a few things that you've asked. Okay. If anything I've said there doesn't make sense, please probe further. Yes, somehow. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when you say that the Canaanites were the first um, uh, whites, to, for want of a better word, and they went into Europe and they mixed with people there, who were the people that were there? Right, so the people that were there were created a few thousand years before the Canaanites by way of Canaan. Yeah, so in essentially, when we're going to the actual facts, the actual facts what Wolf Sabat teaches is that the Pleiadian gene was always in the DNA, the genetic makeup of some of these Adamites, okay? And if you know anything about genetics, genetics are out of either um, fear or fright or um, some kind of trauma, it can express that gene. Does that make sense? So the expression, the expression of that gene came by way of Noah, okay? Who's, who's um, um, he from, from that expression of that gene, it manifested in his chromosomes. And so when, that's why the prediction, it says, curse be Canaan. Yeah, it didn't say curse be Ham. It says curse be Canaan because that gene was expressed in Noah, which moved into, um, sorry, curse, um, Ham's DNA, it was expressed. But the actual manifestation of it was in his son, Canaan, who became, who was born an albino. So that was just... 4,004 years for BCE, run, run about that time region. Then what you what happened was is that because he was ostracized from his family, Canaan took his um, mistress, uh, wives or whatever it was, his, his concubine, his, his partner, and they moved up into the highlands because the name itself, Canaan, means lowlander. Yeah. And that's he inherited that because he moved up to the highlands and going into the highlands, he inherited another name. OK, and from from all these um, traveling up into the highlands, he met a species of beings there who had been created a couple of thousand years prior to the manifestation of Canaan as an albino. This particular manifestation or creature or being that was created was the albino of the Pleiadians because the Pleiadians had already established their own children on this planet. And like I said, when you go into archaeology, that will be known as your Cro-Magnon. Yeah, that's your Cro-Magnon species of, 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 of um, the root stock or the root race of the Caucasians. Then because of the mixing in a marriage, marriage of Canaan with the Flugorods that produce your Canaanite or Caucasian race, hence the name Caucasian, because it's, it's phonetically you see, you're hearing the word carcass Asian, which means deteriorating Asiatic. The reason why it's deteriorating because their DNA doesn't hold together and it's not very potent. So they, they deteriorate very fast or quicker than we do as people who have dark skin or of um, African or Dravidian um, race. So what's taking place is that when Kanam mixed in with the Flugorods, he obviously had progeny, his children. Those children were known as the 11 tribes of Kanan, the 11 sons of Kanan. And I named some of them already. So your Amorite, your Hittite, etc. 
So you can actually go and research about the Hittites in history. You know, you can research about the Amorites in history. So some of these became um, tribal names like the, your Phoenician Canaanites, because there was two, two types. There was your Phoenicians who were of dark skin that were Dravidian and of African descent. Then you also had your Phoenician Canaanites who were also of um, mixture and produce of a Caucasian or light skin hue. Okay, and this was this has been going on through through antiquity, the mixing in of genetics. Okay, but that essentially is your your Canaan story, and the beings that he met were beings known as the Flugelrods or the Cro-Magnon, and then mixed in with them to produce your Caucasian race that we know today. I mean, obviously they don't look like that now because they're being you know cleaned up as we taught them many many things over the many years, you know, the Moors taught them, you know, the ancient Egyptians taught them when they came into Egypt under Alexander the Great or Alexander the Greek, you know, who was of Mesodomia and um, of, of Greek parentage, you know. So you had different times and different events when the European or the Caucasian race would come into Africa. And when they came into Africa, they will then either take on the culture and mix in. And one of them was, for instance, your Hyksos dynasty. So the Hyksos dynasty were actually Caucasians that migrated and lived amongst, you know, the Africans, as it were. Okay, and then they learned the customs and the ways. And then this is where you get your biblical story of Moses and that Moses and he lived there. And you also get the, the story of, um, I think it was Isaac and the other story of Abraham. They all went into Egypt at one point in time. Okay. But it's eventually they ended up staying there. It's like us right now, you know, obviously one, we came here involuntary without, you know, um, any consent from anyone. And two, we voluntarily come here and over a span of generations of maybe, maybe, 10, 10 decades, how many decades? 60 decades? Yeah, most of us think we're British. Yeah, mo not even think. We act British, we do everything British, etc. So we have to look at it, it's like this, that when those people from the Canaanite tribes that migrated into Egypt, they took on African customs. So they lived as Africans, they ate as Africans, etc. even to the point where they even worship the same gods, you know? But as time went on, when they left and they picked up other cultures and other tribes and then other extraterrestrials came in and said, no, you must not worship. This is what your biblical story is talking about, that there were certain beings that made them and wanted to control them. And this is where you get in your God character of Yahweh coming in, which was your Anunnaki and your Pleiadians who were playing themselves off as gods to these tribes of Adamites. You see, so it's a, it's a very long and... I can't go into it, please. You can't go into it in one class. <laughs> it's, it's a very long um, episode, you know. So yeah, if um, but yeah, if you don't understand and and you want to probe further, I can probe. But essentially, there's a lot that I have to unpack when it comes to the um that race, um, Caucasian race or the Adamites. Uh, but I hope that answers your question so far. Uh, to to a point, but um, because a lot of what you mentioned, you know, I've, I've read about. But this is what I'm what I was trying to get at is that um, you say that the Canaanites moved out and uh, mixed in with another set of people. So the Flugels mm. must have been created before them, and the Flugels right. that I've seen in 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 scrolls are white beings already. Sorry, you've seen, so you've, no seen, you've seen you've seen sorry, say that again. You've seen I didn't catch the, the picture. Line. Pictures of flugelrods that I've seen in yeah. scrolls, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 Caucasian in in appearance already, you know, blonde right. hair, um, pale skin, and already. So this is what I'm saying. So they was created before the Canaanite um, uh, got cursed. That's correct. That's right. Wait, wait. They're, they're basically they were created eight thousand four hundred years ago. Right. And so the, then and... wouldn't that so wouldn't that be a Caucasian story before the Canaanite one then? That's right. The Canaanite, the Canaanites and the Flugelrods, the story of the Flugelrods would have been, but the thing is, the reason why 
we don't use Caucasians. We they all, um, how can I say, put it under the umbrella of Caucasian. It's because of the region. Remember, it's a region that they came from. Yeah, but their their tribal names are Hittite, Horite, etc. Or in this day and time, it's your um, Irish, your British, your Celts, etc. These are the same people, but in different times of 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 power, they gave themselves different names and different titles. So you you kind of like think they they they're not the same people but they actually are of the same stock. They're the same species, just that under different names. Does that make sense? Hello? You there, my brother? Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I had to, 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 to come back in, sorry. Okay, so this, right. yeah, this, is, this is a bit of the confusion. And so if the Canaanites and the food are the, as the same people, is this what we're saying? Yeah, eventually they mixed in and became one tribe. Yeah. I'm confused. Okay, okay. Right. Let me start again. Let me start again. Because I'm oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Let me just go to the point that's confusing me. So yeah. the Canaanites are coming from Afrafreika, right? From Nubian people, um, from African people. Is that right? From or the mixture of Japan? So they're coming from and... the Adamites. They're coming from the Adamites who were created originally from the African race. Yeah. They're you coming see, from they... the Adamites. Yeah, because because Noah, yeah, was an Adamite. Right. Okay, let, let's take it back a bit. Adam and Eve, as explained, were from two tribes that already were on this planet. Those two tribes were already from vast empires and families, but there were just two sub-tribes that these extraterrestrials decided to use to create the Adamite species. Does that make sense? It's gone again. Yeah, yeah, to us, sorry. Okay, no worries, yeah? So yeah, just switch us off. Originally, the, the child known as Eve... Okay, or the person that we call Eve or is known as Eve, she came from a tribe known as the Patarites, okay, and the tribe known as the Havilaites. There were those were two tribes that were already on the planet. They existed from many generations and thousand years before. So, so, sorry, sorry, Zaman. Uh, I don't mean to cut into you. You see, no, no. this is this is what I know. I know of um 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 Nakebo and Sakar. Okay, I know yeah. of these, right? So, yeah. and this is what I'm saying now. So, through them, you're saying that the DNA was taken from them and mixed to create the um, Caucasians? No, no. What I'm saying is that the DNA was already in them when they took the Pleiadians, they took the Anunnaki or the, the um, what we know as Enki and um What's her name? Ninti. Are you following? To her. Are you familiar with the names Ninti and Enki? Yes, yeah, okay. yes, yes, yes. So I know who they are. These were geneticists. These were scientists. Okay. Uh, but it no gal and Arishka gal is exactly, like exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah these yeah. scientists, they is that's what I said that they start packets a lot, but essentially your Pleiadians had a part to play because they were enslaved by the Anunnaki, the, the, the ones that were of albino hue. This, you can find this story in um in another Patarak. I'll find the name of the Patarak. But essentially, so these extraterrestrials were already having battles and wars in this solar system. Okay? The prisoners... Is, that, from, is, is, that, is, is, is this in a um, mission of an extraterrestrial involvement? No, no. This is from the affirmation no. that the master teachers now give us, been oh, given right, us okay. through the Patarax. Yeah, so okay. really and truly, I'm taking you into affirmation now. With me. Right. You, were, you were information when you were learning about Zakar and the Kibu and that. Now this is affirmation. The affirmation right. is that extraterrestrials known as Pleiadians and extraterrestrials known as the Anunnaki, who were from the Arcturus star system, they came, they were on this planet, and this is where you get your um, story of Enki wanting to bind a creature with the image of the Anunnaki. 
in the holy tablets from. So from the mixture of the Anunnaki, Ninti's DNA, and Enki's DNA, what they did was then they extracted those fetuses, implanted it into, this was all genetics, yeah? So they implanted the germ into the Palladian females. Are you following? Sure. Yeah? The Palladian females then gave birth to the first stock or the first prototype of the Adamite race. Because remember, the Adam that you read in the Genesis story, that was the, let's just say, the last prototype. The very first prototype was the Adamu or the um, Lulu, Lulu Amelu. Okay? So yeah, what, 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 what you got to follow is that there's been many, many um, experiments that have been done on the Adamites. Okay, you got there's a lot of feedback, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't know if you can lower your um volume slightly or something, but there's a lot of feedback. That's why I kept muted him when he was speaking because yeah, he was feeding back. Yeah, okay, if you can still hear me, so from this particular experimentation, different stock of Adamites were created or were made in the image and the likeness of these extraterrestrials known as the Anunnaki, known as the Pleiadians, okay? And from that stock, the very um, last species that was finalized and finished product was the Adam of, now you jump into Genesis and it talks about Adam, male and female created he, them and called their name Adam. Yeah. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that, unfortunately, because we've most of us have got religion or Genesis embedded, and I know you are at a stage where you understand about Enki and Enlil, but the the story of Enki, Enlil, Ninti, etc., is a far more bigger story still. Because what they were doing is they were doing experimentations at different stages of time. So, for instance, they made the first prototype. The very first prototype was the Lulu Amelu. Okay. So, they, so, so, uh, sorry, sorry, Zabal. I'm just going to cut in there. Right yeah. now, that's yeah. the bit. That's the bit that's cleared it up for me. When you're saying to me now, there's different stages and different things happen at different ah. points. Oh, that makes more sense to me because okay. this is what I'm saying. I kind of sort of seen it as the one story fits all. Do you yeah. understand? So, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, all right, all right, thanks. But, you know, I'm just, I mean, I don't want to leave people confused as well, so let me just try and wrap it up. Right. In a, in a, a... So, essentially, your your Adam story, okay, was is a far greater story than, than, than what Genesis or some of the Enuma Elish and Atrahasis, etc. What the master teacher is has been doing with us is raising us in degrees and given us what we what he's referred to as out formation okay so he said he's always said this he said that i'm going to take you to a level where they can't follow yeah so he's going to get to a point where we're going to come out of persons places and things and we're going to go into universal doctrine universal knowledge and universal knowledge is what wu sabat is about because it's about the universe, sound right reasoning, okay, and ontology about the universes and the multiverses. So there's certain things that he had to give us the baby school to. And that baby stage was that, yes, Enki and Lil, yes, they made the Lulu Amalu, but now the Lulu Amalu were mixed with such and such and such. And they, they you know, they had children. And you see what I'm saying? So now he's given us the broader, wider picture. And the reason why he's done it in stages is so that your mind is able to then absorb that higher form of knowledge or affirmation. Because people, for instance, um, who are, yeah, second, do you have something to want to add? Tourism, I, I just mm. wanted to, um, the reference, the melanonite children, um, if the brother's got that or if you've got that, it actually explains on page 69, it explains what you were saying in terms of um, 
remember that the Asiatic black man are the descendants of the Hindu with black skin and straight hair who had a dissatisfied nature and um, evil dwelled within them. The evil was already there. It was by the grace of their wise scientists who met with the elders of the Donakil did they decide to try to graft the evil out of their nature. And the ultimate result was the Flugerods. Um, the Flugerods came out of this genetic splicing and graftation in attempts to remove their disagreeable side for evil live within these Asiatic black men, original Hindu, since their evil ancestors came to the planet 60 and 6 billion years ago. These Hindus are the ones who converted to Yakub's plan. And then obviously it, it goes on, but it adds to what you were saying in terms of how the Flugerods came about before, because there were 2,400 years before the Adamites of 6,000 years ago, like you said, 8,400 years ago. So sure. if he has that scroll, the Melanonite children, it, it goes into a bit more detail. Appreciate it. Thank you for the Yeah. So, um, yeah, I hope also it helps. Sorry, cheers, to man. Sorry, cheers, to man. It's Vesta that's uh, speaking. Okay, Vesta. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions on, um, on that topic or any other topic? If you have a question, yeah. Oh, hold on. Oh. There's, one, there's one in the store, and then Zach, I see. Is it Zach who just asked a question? It is. I could, I could wait if someone's got one. Yeah, someone's got one, and then you next. Okay. Zach. Thank you, man. Yeah. Oh, sorry, this might sound like a bit of a mess, but you just said a lot for the past 15 minutes. Yes, I did. Um, so going back to the Nagari being the original race, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and all the there were three original races. One was the Nagari, the Asian, and the Dravidian. Viridian. Is that the, or would that be in Chinese, Chinese, African, and then your Indians? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we get into sub races now. Mm. And sub races come from the Anunnaki mixing with the Nugaru. Is that correct? That, that would be a formal sub race, yeah. A that formal sub, sub race. Yes, yeah, so a formal sub race, yeah. You said something about. Um, and what that created, the Adamites and Gara mixing with the Anunnaki. Okay. It wasn't a mixture, as in, let's have copulation. Mm. Yeah, let's have sex and have a breed a child. It was more genetics. Genetics yeah, splicing. So, yeah, genetic splicing that went on. A lot of genetic splicing went on with the creation of the Adamites at different stages. And the last stage came yes. out with Adam and Eve. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So... You mentioned Eve being a little bit light skin. Mm -hmm. Would I be correct in saying, or and would I, the in this time we can have two black people come together, two Nagarus, mm -hmm. and create a light skin child or someone yeah. who's fairer? Yeah. Would I be correct in saying that one of those parents have DNA from the Anunnaki? Either the Anunnaki or Palladians. So, yeah. or just that they were also light skin because. Melanin has different um, composition. So melanin can be of the light to all the way to the very dark. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. But the original race, Nagari, we are all... Of dark skin hue, woolly hair. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, or e even before the hair, we had no hair. See. <laughs> so when you was mentioning about um, soulmates and your etheric level lowering when you was mixing with women who aren't of the same mm -hmm. sub race as you. Mm -hmm. Would it be correct in saying that mixing with a woman who's light skin, would that be the same, or well, not the same as mixing with a woman who's white, but could no. that potentially lower your etheric no. being? No, no, no. Ether and um, genetic traits are two separate things. You see what I'm saying? Your etheric potency is to do the, your matrix. Do you understand? Mm. Yeah, of, of, of the essence of you. That's the true essence of you, your etheric being. Okay. okay. The manifestation of that, as it slows down its vibration, it will produce the image that you and I will look at. Do you see what I'm saying? But that's not the core essence of you. Okay. Does that make sense? So yeah. I am correct in saying that it's mixing with a light skinned woman who's Nagaru, mm -hmm. isn't the same as mixing with a white woman. Exactly and correct. mixing with a light-skinned woman yeah. isn't going to lower my etheric being. No. However, 
depending when you say light skin, you have to not differentiate between mixed race light skin or just a light skin Nagaru. Based off the previous question, yeah. when I asked about mixed race, mm -hmm. you said it could potentially. Okay, be then mixed. yeah, if it's yeah, if it's mixed. But race. if both her parents are Nagaru, mm -hmm. fully woolly hair, mm -hmm. then yeah, no. yeah. So I'd have to see the parents to mm -hmm. to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, that was it. Yeah, you. okay. And 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 it's it's it, I mean that's what I'm saying. The 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 whole essence of soul and etheric potency, etc., is very, very important in understanding that you see, when you look at like for instance the Asian race, okay, the types of food they eat, the types of things culture that they practice is very different to that of an, an Agaru or African race, because we eat different types of food, etc. So this has a part to play in our genetic makeup. You with me? Because everything translates into the ether. And when it translates into the ether and the spirit and the soul, it strengthens that particular energy that's within you because you're made up of a different formula. You see what I'm saying? So nine ether is all the formulas, all light, all energy, etc., combined together is what nine ether is. While other races, their E3 potency has less formula, has less gases. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So when you are mixing with a female that has less gases or male that has less gases and E3 potency, all you're doing is you're dropping your vibration. Do you see what I'm saying? To the level where you start to act and behave that way because it has an impression on you. Yeah? So I, just, I just thought of another question. Um, I have to move back to the mid thing. Um, I heard that it's the woman who carries the microbiome and My, the mitochondria. The mitochondria. Yeah. So would I be correct in saying that if a mid girl's mother isn't of Nugaru, mm. then they are less likely to have a higher level of ether. Less likely, yeah. That's but right. if their mother is fully woody haired in Nugaru, they are more likely to have a higher level of exactly. okay. So say that their father is and their mother, their father's Nugaru and their mother's white, mm. but they see themselves because some most mystery people mystery. Yeah. don't see themselves as mystery. They're all different. Some see themselves as white. Yeah mixed race mm -hmm. or some just straight see themselves as black mm -hmm. if they live their life as a black person mm -hmm. at the same food mm -hmm. was raised in black culture mm -hmm. and truly saw themselves as a black person mm -hmm. but their mother is white and mm -hmm. their dad is Nukaru mm -hmm. is there still a chance of their E3 potency being higher definitely because it's that's what I'm saying that the, the genetic makeup of you all translates into the E3 realm you with me so being that you are a child that is linked to both um, E3 energies, yeah, that of a Nagaru or that of a Mukasu or Caucasian, okay, depending on what is dominant in you, yeah, is what will dictate your actions. Do you understand? So if it's a Nagaru is the dominant part of you, then you are going to gravitate towards eating those foods, listening to that type of music, etc. That that will make your E3 potency stronger and increase as long as you're practicing those practices. Yeah. Now, if you end up mixing with a, a Mukasu or Caucasian or any other species that is not of your own, all you're doing is just lowering your um, your energy. You see what I'm saying? Because remember, energy can be taken. Yeah, by the other be other person. Yeah, and all you all you be doing is just you it's been leached from you until you start to go back to your own. Yeah, that's why it's good to actually be amongst your own. Even when you're sick, you go to really a uh, one of your own who knows about your physiology. You know, when you're um in a this a you know, work environment and most of your um colleagues are European or, or Asian stock, what's gonna happen is as you blend in with them and do the things that they do and, you know, have that, all that, um, what they call it, they call it as a particular name that they use, you know what I mean? All coming together and having food and et cetera. All of that is you giving your energy, is your energy that's been taken, mm -hmm. you see? So it's best to then come home or to be amongst those who are of your own race because then your vibration comes back up, you see? So that's what it's about. It's like two cells, that's why if you have a cell that is um, one sick, like a cancerous cell, and the other one, it will just on, all it will do the, the other cancerous cell will just leach onto that and then create proliferation of cancer. 
if you have a, he a healing cell and that cell will then transfer to that one, then you know what I'm saying? And then it will heal itself. Likewise with us, we're just cells in one body, you know, but we have to be amongst each other and practice our way. You know, it's, 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 it's easier said than done. I'm not going to lie because we've got many multiple families and DNAs that's influencing our thoughts and our actions and our behaviors, et cetera. That is, it's not easy to say, oh, just, I'm going to just cut that out. You with me? Yeah. You have a battle and a struggle that you have to contend with on a daily basis. Yeah. Okay. All right. Before I go to you, there's a question on, is it Zoom? Um, was it Zach? Zach Phillips? Yeah. Yeah. Thank All you, right. man. Greetings. Um, greetings, thank you. Uh, just quickly, it's about the, um, just before um, second, was reading that bit, I was thinking about Jacob. I just wanted to understand the Nuapian perspective on Jacob a bit more. Um, likewise, um, Rachel and I was reading Black Root Science, and mm. he talks about, basically puts it like Yahweh and Jacob are all the same person, and this is quite crazy scientist who genetically spliced and created the um, the white man as a kind of a test. Mm. Um for for black people really um and yeah it was, it was an interesting perspective but i would like to know like the new rpm perspective on Jacob and who that figure is yeah so the, okay. the, um what you say new new rpm perspective we say actual facts <laughs> yes so, yeah, yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to know the facts <laughs> so, so the actual facts is um yakub grafted devil is talking about another race of extraterrestrials who were actually made by the Nataru, okay? Um, the beings that were made in the image of, sorry, the Anunnaki, I beg your pardon. They're descendants of the Anunnaki, okay? These actual, um, they were known as the Dunakils, okay? Right. And the Dunakils, they lived in the caverns of the planet. Now, between those two types of extraterrestrials, there was the Dunakils and the Teros, okay? Mm -hmm. And what happened was, there was a it was a mismarriage of sorts that produced this child known as Yakub. Right. Okay. Now Yakub was born what is um, referred to as a hydrocephalic, meaning that his he had two brains that was operating at different times. Okay. Right. And from those two brains, so this is the actual facts now that's been um, mm -hmm. um we're breaking out because I think Black Root Science, if I'm hundred percent correct is that mm. they're getting their teachings from the Nation of Islam, and I think they're just a branch off from that. And then they've added their own twist. If, if it's correctly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the person who wrote it is, he said he's like a griot, like an African griot, so it's supposed to okay. come from, but it's definitely a lot of um, what he was saying was from the Nation of Islam stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think they, they're probably more aligned off. with that. Yeah. 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 So, so th these two um, extraterrestrials, the Tiros, and uh, Dunakil mm -hmm. having this uh, um, child that was our premarital, um, you know, relationship mm -hmm. or extramarital, as they call it. Okay, mm -hmm. um, won't get into all the names, but you can find this out in the holy tablets where mm -hmm. it actually goes into all of this. Uh, if you can get your hands on it, because it, obviously it's an old publication. Mm -hmm. So, what's taken place is that these two extraterrestrial tribes. From that extramarital marriage, produced this child who was very disgruntled, angry at the fact that he had, you know, the size of his head. He was being teased. You know, his parents were killed, etc., because of treason. They weren't supposed to marry. He had a lot of issues. Let's just put it that way. Mm. So, from those issues, what happens is when you're emotionally unbalanced and mentally unbalanced. Um, Unfortunately, extraterrestrials, other beings can actually influence the way you think and the way you behave, and they can um, what's the word? They can import, influence your decision making. So they gave Yaku the idea of creating this subspecies that they could then utilize to come into this realm and mix in with, and that's what right. produced your flugorots. Got you. Okay. Got you. And then the flugorods, that's why I said we have to first look at the and the antiquity story, you know, like ancient story. They refer to as the flugorods in, in some writings. And then when you when you go into the anthropology or the archaeology, which is the modern day scientific name for them, that'll be your Cro-Magnon. Right. Does that right. make sense? Yeah? Yep. 
Mm-hmm. Now, the the from that from that creation or graftation, they grafted, as the brothers explaining, Saken was that they grafted them from the Hindus who were already disagreeable or negative. Some of them were actually demonic. Some of these Hindus that came to this planet, mm-hmm. yeah. And from that pro- 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 produce of that is where Yakub is basically coming from. So his his um, mental state was influenced, and he created this um, creature that became your um, your flugoroids or your first type of Adam prototype. Right. Okay. And that's your yeah. Yakub's grafted devil, which Elijah Muhammad says that he was fascinated with magnets and he created magnets, but then he doesn't go on to explain. Um, for instance, he explains like for, um, how the sheep, um, there was mm-hmm. two types of animals, and then he gro- he, he separated the sheep, and the, and the one of them was, you see what I'm saying? Spotted. What's the black and white one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, the spotted sheep and etc. So it's the, the one, when you actually now start to look into the out formation, mm-hmm. when you're saying spotted sheep, you're talking about the Canaanites who were cursed with leprosy, or right. yeah. which which is not really leprosy. It's actually a, a genetic, um, many many diseases that they had. It wasn't just leprosy. They had many different deformities that was going on. So, um, your Jacob story then comes out of that too. When you hear about mm-hmm. Jacob separating the sheep, and you know one one was from Laban. Ones. From Laban, his um, uncle. Yeah, Laban exactly. So Laban, the word Laban means milky, milky white. You see, mm-hmm. so they're all telling you in some shape or form that this mm-hmm. was your first type of Caucasians that were separated and moved to different parts of the world. So some were moved to the Asian islands mm-hmm. in the Isles of Pilon, and some were moved to Greece. Okay, and then some were moved to Turkey. Right. So the clean ones, they moved to the Isles of Pilon or the Greek islands. And that became from of that came your stock of Greeks who were right. what happened was they were cleaned, they were cleaned up and then educated to a certain level. Right. That became your Jews of today. Right. right. Uh-huh. Okay. And then the ones that were left un- unclean, they then left them in the mountains, and these became your Horites, your Hittites, etc. Yeah, so those clean lepers and unclean lepers, according to your Bible story. You know, mm-hmm. when they, yeah. you know, the, it was it called the Levites, because mm. the Levites were the ones that were given like um, rule over those particular Canaanites at that time. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they, you can find this in um, Bigfoot uh, called Kabir Kadam. Um, that's a book written by um, Out, um, Out Formation, written by Pardon Babi, an actual fact called Kabir Kadam, which is uh, translated as Bigfoot. And it okay. tells you even there's even goes even further into the the root race of that being that <laughs> certain um, beings that came to this planet they use their D- DNA as well. So it's, a, it's a, like I said, it's a lot to unpack. <laughs> so a lot no. to unpack. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the answer. Really You're most it. welcome. Thank you, Zach. Okay, um, right. The sister unfortunately had to leave the room. So are there any questions on Clubhouse? Um, let me just check if any questions on Clubhouse. Okay, no, there isn't. Um, any questions in the room at the moment or on um Zoom? Yes, mom. Yes. Hi there. <laughs> I come back with I come back with my question to you. Okay, okay. Go the, ahead. Um the, the word unconditional and love. Just explain it to for me, please. Oh boy. Um that's a good one. <laughs> well, I mean the word itself, unconditional, is literally that. Is there's no conditions. You with me? There's no. Um, and actually, in fact, let me just give you an example of unconditional love. Children, yeah. You can be mad at a child. You see what I'm saying? Um, shout at them, even to the point where sometimes you might even, you know, hit them for whatever, or to the point of abuse them. But whatever level of that you've ad- administered to that child okay that child will still come back to you and want to hug you etc or you know do things that will think to yourself wow this is unconditional this is un- they, they, they have no conditions do you know what i mean it's only as they get older and conditions are put on them 
that they start to then compartmentalize everything and say, well, he did this to me, so I'm not going to speak to her or her, him. Do you know what I mean? They hurt me, so they, they, they're they my enemy, etc. But when you look at children, they can argue and fight, you know what I mean? And then hours later, they, they're together and they're playing and they'll be... I mean, these, I see this in my children. That's what I'm giving you. as an, And the master has always said about children that they have unconditional love, you know. So it only gets to a point where they come to but become into the age of awareness. And then the lenses start to differentiate between these different types of um, energies that they then start putting conditions because of the trauma that they might have experienced. And they don't want to feel that trauma again. But essentially, before a certain age, up to before the age of 10, or even before then, I think nine, seven, eight, the children mostly have what is referred to as unconditional love, you know? <laughs> right there. Hold on, let me just answer this question, yeah? All right. And um, so the love aspect now that the master teacher has been teaching us about is first and foremost, learning to care. Yeah, before we can get to the point of having unconditional love towards one another, we have to learn to care um, towards one another, show care, show the appreciation, show the gratitude that we have one. When somebody asks you to do something and you do it and they say thank you or vice versa, this is all part of learning to care for that individual. If somebody's hurt, you care for them, you go and visit them. This is all forms of caring. From that um, foundation, where you're learning to care for some yourself and for others, that builds up into having unconditional um, responsibility for them and for others, just like how my partner Babi Anun, Dr. Malika has for us and also our ancestors and supreme beings, Natharu, okay, have for us. Because essentially it's unconditional love is why we exist. Is the reason why we have a soul because we've been given those divine essence in us to allow us to express those same things that our ancestors or the Ethereans gave to us, which is soul, you know, because soul cares, soul makes things happen, soul is motivated, soul is joyful, you know, and this is what we're all about. Okay, so unconditional love is based off of our shook. Okay, our shook. Now, there's different types of love in our culture, which is um, the three different types of love, which I'll find. Hopefully, I've got it here. Um, or is it upstairs, Zamal? Um, the, the three types of love? Yeah, brother, get it. I think I've got it here as well. Let me just search for it. Uh, no, that's not it. All right. Okay, this is um from the revelations to the Sabians. Part of the way. Zamal, if you can't find it, can you let him know? Um, can you let him know not to bother. I found it. Yeah. Oh, you were you looking for as well? No. Oh, okay. Right. So here, um, the revelation to the Sabians, part of the way. Okay, let me share the screen. Uh, let's see it for yourself. Let's see. Okay, why is my zoom? My zoom's not responding. Why isn't it responding? Okay, let me share this screen. Right, let me know if you can see the screen. Can you see the screen, Zamata? To us, Zamal. All right, well, wait. So, here you have Revelation to the Sabians part throughout the way. Okay, you have Ashok, three types of love Ashok, Maro, and Habub. 
Okay, so we have three different types of love. It's not just like one. Um, lo, or oh, you who have enmity within your Ayabab heart, and yet and still you claim to be Musbatu, Sabian, a child of the loving Nataru overseers. Listen to Parnabab Yanun and understand our shuk divine love is our top priority. Number three, therefore, if you can teach Wu Sabat and even speak the language of Miss Bhatia Sabatic with brilliance and study the teachings, if you do not consider true our shuk divine love for one another, your life is for naught. For Pa Nataru, the overseers will never consider you for the journey or transformation. It would have been preferable that you never came upon Wu Sabat, Miss Batia. Uh, or myself, Ba Ba Yanun. Even if you are a Mukhanu priest or even a Munbab master, if you are not endowed with the right wisdom, the right understanding, the right knowledge, and sound right reasoning peering through your ba'a soul, ka'a spirit, and khatat body from your akhach ether and even integrity, neither is any goodness residing in your being, making all you do unreal. Five, even if you give your wealth to the cause of Wusabat, your hands on building of taha maye reye, or even sacrifice your free wakot time in the service, yet Without divine love, it will be as if you have neither contributed anything nor made any sacrifices in the service of Wu Sabat or for Baba Yanun. Ashuk, divine love, is a verb, an action. Okay, so just, just um, I'll give it, leave it there and then I'll move to... I think the other one is this here. Right. And then it goes and explain um, here, which key do you hold? Ashuk divine love, maro, darling love of another. So that's what the other one translates to mean. Yeah. So you have love of mate, love of your children, love of family, relationship, etc. All right. And then you have habub, contact love, which is obviously endearing love between all three, sorry, contact love like or all three or self-love yeah as you as a musbatu sabian stand at the gate which kind of key will be in your hand which gate will you open all right and so that's essentially um what ashuk is unconditional love is you have no hatred love i mean sorry um towards anybody you give as and when you can, yeah, you're, you're your brother or sister's keeper, you know, but it all stems from first learning to care. So the master's always said, learn to care first and then build that as a foundation and then you'll be able to apply unconditional love. Okay, I hope that helped, um, Zamal Tat. Tell it out, Zamal. Okay. So, so what about when the ad what about when the adults there they have their conflicts mm. and um you 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 want to keep your silence because you you want them to know what they have done is wrong what kind of love is that then okay if you want to express your feelings and how you um what what you are thinking to your other half your partner that is unconditional love because Unconditional love is not weak, as the masters always explain. It's not weak. You see what I'm saying? It's strong. It's a very powerful force. So is whether the person who you are expressing it to is able to emotionally have enough emotional intelligence and, um, how can I say, resolve to be able to uh, embrace what you are expressing to them without breaking down and feeling like it's, it's, you know, you're attacking them, you know, you, they're making them feel small, you know, all those kind of um, things that we feel when we're, our other half is talking to us, you know, and then it's all also stems from the fact that knowing your inner, your true inner voice, 
you see, and being able to be ready to embrace whatever comes to you. So if your other half has something that they want to express out of true love, because they either want to make you a better person, or that they're trying to explain how they felt in that particular situation, etc. You have to be receptive, you see what I'm saying, with that and putting aside, subduing your ego, etc., and listen intently to that person. That's that's another element of caring. Because if you truly care for that person, you would take your time to listen to what they're saying and then introspect, okay, and at the same time listen to the true voice that's in you. This is all part of the having a relationship and being able to link, know what ancestor is speaking through you at certain times, because they're the ones sometimes that are going to be the ones that will sabotage a relationship because they don't like that other person, but it manifests in you because of your own um, energy or emotional energy that you are then um, fueling that ancestor to come forth. Okay, so I hope that makes sense and I explain it as much as, as best as I could. Sure, Samal. And um, one more thing. What about um the test that has been sent down here for us to pass? So um, I didn't, I didn't did you that. choose the pardon me? I didn't catch that. Say that first part again. The test has been sent down here for us to pass so we could get back over to the other side. Okay. Um. Yeah. Does 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 um the beings they choose those beings to be beside you to pass your tests or you do? Let me get this correct. You're asking the twenty four tests that um we've been given. Are you the one that going to pass? I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to understand your question. Yeah, no, yeah. Again, I'm just okay. Where where you're saying the master teacher is trying to say that we have tests that we have to pass to yes. go back to the other side. Yes. So I am asking. So mm. is the beans them? They the elders. They send mm. those beans beside you to pass your tests, or you choose those beans to pass your tests. Okay. No. What's happened is you are assigned a descending being and an ascending being. So one records your deeds and one records your intentions. Okay? And then you have numerous other relatives and who are around us that try to keep you on your path. Yeah, and he said that to watch the Adjustment Bureau. It's a movie to get an idea of how your relatives or ancestors, they keep you on your fate, your destiny. But because of, you know, we get sidetracked for whatever reason, we can get sidetracked and don't stay on our destiny. You with me? So yes, you do have ascending masters, as he calls them, and descending masters. You can find this in the book, um, The Spiritual You, after the physical you dies, and also in the, I'm sure it's the Akasha records, the Akasha records. Um, let me try and see if I've got the spiritual you after the physical you dies. And I can read that. So, so essentially, you will be watched and the, everything will be recorded, okay? And this will re be reported or recorded on your on your disc. You're always known as the me stone. Okay. So let me just find if I can find this physical you have the spiritual you guys. Yeah. And also because sorry, is that someone asking a question? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Hi. So I was reading just what you're talking about in that book. Mm -hmm. And and that's a question I wanted to ask. What what are or who are ascending and descending masters um, or teachers? Uh, yeah. Sorry, who, who, who do you say who are they? Yeah. Okay. Because I was reading it. I was reading about that just this week. Okay. 
in from that same book you you mentioned. Okay. And I circle it to ask about it. To actually oh, so we, we've hit, we've hit this, uh, the topic then. Um, the master teacher, as far as I'm aware, hasn't exactly explained who they are. Um, they are whether they're relatives, I mean, or whether they're actually Ethereans assigned to you. He hasn't gone uh, as far as I'm aware. He hasn't gone into the details specifically, but he's just explained that they are ascending masters and descending masters. Could you actually um, tell me the page as I scroll down so I can share it on the screen? Oh, it's on the screen already. Yeah. Could you tell me the page? Because I'm trying to look for it now. Okay, page six. Oh, brilliant. I literally, I literally landed on it as you, <laughs> as you said it. 38. Okay. 38. 38, right. Yes, and it talks about um, old formation by the ascending masters of your life and information by the descending master of your life. Okay. And this is in the same book. Um, maybe you've got, you've got a in, um series series nineteen. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Right, I've got it as forty four in my one, but yeah, I found it. Um, so it, this is more in relation to if you really made a bad decision in your life and then you transitioned, that they have the ability to actually wipe that mistake and then give you a second chance, as it were. However, these ascending masters, one's the looker, and Nazul Nabab, descending master, one's the watcher, agreed to it not being your fault or real true regret. So what they do is that they record all of your actions and intentions. OK, but he hasn't, like I said, gone into specifically whether it's a relative or it's Ethereans that are been assigned to you. Uh, unless unless um, one of the student teachers can clarify. But I, I cannot remember reading anyway. It might be one of the updates, but um, I'd have to search for that and then um, probably produce it later. OK, so that's all I have on that, I'm afraid. Okay, thank you. You're most welcome. I mean, please, please probe further if um, you want any more clarity. But um, I, I, I won't at this stage because I believe you were going to look for something and I don't want to distract you too much from um, that. What was I going to look for? I think it was the same spiritual you after physical you dies, unless there's something else. I've done the three loves, three types of love. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Any questions so far? Yes, Amal. Um, mm -hmm. So what about, okay, if you hasn't passed your test, you left the body, would you be coming back to do the same test again? Um, to do the same test again? Yes, yes. Um, so Ken's got something to add to that. Um, so Ken, do you wanna, do you, have you got something to add to the descending masters and ascending masters? You have your hand raised. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna add that. Uh, um that you record everything in your matrix, which is recorded in your me stone, as you said. So um, the, the eyes, your eyes are like solar panels and they record everything. Your hands record everything. Your feet record everything. So really the records are already being kept um, by yourself because um, you, you're basically storing everything in your matrix and this these are the records that will then be accessed to determine so you can't really hide from yourself mm -hmm. um, and in religion they in islam especially they make this into the two angels that are on your left and your right hand side which you know you turn to greet when you're doing the prayers so i just wanted to add that bit but like you say in terms of who's going to be actually accessing those records um, I, I don't have any further information on that. I yield. Oh, tell out again, tell that for the input, I appreciate it. Um, yes, yeah, so your question, Nicole, regarding whether you didn't... So what um, Panababia explains it like this, is that if you didn't fulfill 
your, um, let's say, mission or what you're supposed to complete, you will then be given a chance to do it in one of your relatives. So the example he gave is, if, for instance, that child is born, that spirit, which will be, i.e., yourself or a relative, will incarnate or be given up to a certain le length of time to complete what they were supposed to complete inside of that particular child. So if it was you that didn't complete that um, something that you're meant to complete, you will come back through one of your children or ancestors or, you know, your descendants, sorry, I beg your pardon, one of your descendants. And then what would take place is that example is you may have needed to do, a, um, no, sorry, the example the master gave is a dancer. So the child is a prolific dancer. They're dancing, they, they, they're amazing from a certain age to a certain age, and then all of a sudden, the child breaks their leg. And then from then on, they stop dancing. At that point of them breaking their leg is that, that you had fulfilled what you were supposed to complete. You with me? Which was to complete your dancing or whatever you need, or send a message, or, I don't know, create an invention, etc. So you will use your generation, your the children or the, the in your gene pool, you will then incarnate in one of those children up to a certain cycle, which is normally nine years, up to the age of nine, and then you would then complete what you're supposed to complete. If you hadn't, then again, you'd have to come back through on one, one of, another one of your generations in order to complete what you're supposed to complete. And, and then some more, you will leave you will leave the child body. You will yeah. leave the child body. That's right. You will leave the child's body or you will stay around to guide that child. Okay. That's, what, that's how the masters explained it. Okay, well over still. Okay. okay, you're most welcome. Right, I think you had a question, sister? Or is it gone now? No, Zakai. Oh, Zakai had a question. Yeah, he always said, oh, so <laughs> okay. he said, why are we Sabine? I think he's trying to say, like, what makes us Sabine? Oh, okay. Because in school, they're teaching them like, about religion. Ah, like, uh, okay. And he asked one of the way he was like, how come you were not Christian then? Jesus. Okay. All right. That, oh, okay, Zamata. There's, there's a sister in um, the store. She'd been uh, had a um, okay. question for a while. Okay. But you're next. You're next. You're next. Yeah. Appreciate it. I'll tell that. So, Zakai has a question and he wants to know. <laughs> I think I think the question was asked really, so I won't put him on the spot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, why are we Sabians? Yeah. Why are we Sabians? Is that what the question was? And why are there people who are Christian, etc.? Well, it's really and truly for it's really and truly for everybody because you see, most of the decisions that we decide to be, whether that's to be, decide to be a Muslim, a Christian, a Baptist, an Anglican, etc., whatever denomination or religion we choose. It's not something that we've chosen um, without any, um, what's the word, free will. Purely because it's already been chosen for us in the sense that the Adamites or the European are the ones that created these religions. So when you're saying, well, I've chosen a religion, it's not really a, cho it's, it's not really a choice. It's because it's something that you've been given as multiple choice and you've just gone into one of the ones that they can then categorize you under. What makes us different is that we have chosen an ancestral way that works for us. And we are then now calling ourselves Sabians because that's what our ancestors refer to ourselves as. And they have to come to us for the definition. You understand? That's what makes us different because we have actually made a conscious decision to be no longer a, a Christian, a Muslim, a Baptist, etc. We are now Sabians because our ancestors were Sabians or they practiced natural nature science. Yeah. And in practicing natural nature science, there was a name for us which is known as Musbatu. Okay. And that dealt with natural nature, the stars, etc. And Nuwapians is because what, what we are doing is that we actually replacing. And that's what comes down to Zakai's question is that in order for us to um, take people to another level, we have to replace what they know with what we have, which is our own spiritual science. OK, so our, our own spiritual science is Wu Sabat. OK, and that's what we practice because it ties into our, our mothers, our fathers, 
our ancestors, our great grandmothers, our great grandfathers, all the way back. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I hope it makes sense for those listening as well, because sometimes the question is like, why you, why do you call yourself Sabians or why is why is this Busabat or, or, or Nuwapians, etc.? They have to come to us because we have the we hold the key, we have the definition of who we are. While the others, if you say, oh well, we practice Islam, well then they already know what Islam is because they're the ones that gave us that title. You with me? And don't think Islam is made up by you know, a separate race of people known as Arabs, because Arabs are actually Caucasians too, all right? And if you go and research the history or even the actual, um, again, going back to DNA and anthropology and archaeology, you find out that Arabs are actually Caucasians in their genetic makeup, okay? So that's what makes us different. Okay, any question, any other questions? Oh, sorry, um, Aliyah, and then you, my brother, in the store. Aliyah, Rahobat. How are you doing, my sister? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I was saying, how do you think, we're not saying, but how do you think we're, 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 I'm having um, difficulty again with um, the reception. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me very well? I, I can, have to put the headphones in. Okay, I can hear you clearly now, yeah. Then how do you think... Um, how, not... You've gone again. Have I gone? No, I can hear you now. Yeah. No, you're here. Oh man! Which, which is an action. Which is an action. Can you? Could you? Do you think you could join on on the Zoom? But let me let me take let me take the headphones out. One okay. Minute. All right. Is that enough? Yeah. Go ahead. Um. Uh. With the, the um. Mm. How how would you say that we are going forward? Um. With an international. Uh, attaining divine love. How, 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 it would be hard for me to... How, 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 how are we trying to attain... How, oh, how are we trying to attain divine love? Divine love. Okay. Sure. Well, Zamata, what I can say that it starts with each individual recognizing where they are at in Wu Sabah. With me. It would be hard for me to um, generalize about where everybody's at in Wu Sabat. It all pertains to the individual because if, if you are a child of Parnatharu, or should I say, if you acknowledge the existence and reality of Parnatharu, okay? And if you acknowledge the existence of Parnababyananan as being your supreme um, guide and teacher, Okay, Yanun is here to relink us back to divine love by way of our ancestors and by way of our, um, the practices that is within Wu Sabat. So all the different elements of Wu Sabat that we are practicing as a Sabian, okay, is reattuning us into that divine realm, into that divine order. But as I said earlier in the class when the sister asked, is that we first have to learn to care, learn to care about ourselves, you know what I mean, our mental state, our emotional state, our physical state, etc. And then being able to extend that same kind of level of care that we do for ourselves onto, and, and help others and show that kind of love and kindness. Yeah, that those acts of kindness. Okay, which, yeah. okay sorry, you, you cut out again. <laughs> I was trying to get to exactly what you were just Okay. When a master says that Ashok is. No, lost you again. And so... I think it would be best for you to jump onto um, Zoom. I think it'd be... not... Yeah, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh... I've, I've, I, couldn't, I really can't explain to you what's going on. <laughs> 
Can I be heard? Can everybody hear me though? Is is everything clear on on, on Clubhouse? Two hours yeah, tomorrow. Okay, okay, yeah. So it must be reception. Hey. Hmm. I can I can I get parts of what you're asking and then it just drops off for can some you reason. Hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. <laughs> it's not happening as a matter. Yeah. Put it this way. When I see when I see when I see you um I'll get on I'll get on Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, when then we can we can dive, you know, in in explain or help to unbreak um unravel that question and um deal with it. Um any other questions? Yeah, so say my brother, you have a question in the class, yeah. <clears throat> I heard you mention before that you wouldn't know if you was a golden child, mm. but as I've gotten older, I've come to realise who I am and who my parents are, okay. who they really are, who I really am, and just people are more, I think as you get older, you start to develop levels of introspection, mm -hmm. and you start to understand yourself, it's easier to understand other people. Yep. Now, with that being said, you, you mentioned today in class that a golden child will come from two soulmates or two people who've been really truly working on themselves to reach a high level. Mm -hmm. They come together and make a golden child. Yeah. Surely, if a golden child went through the same de similar development that I did with coming to know himself and then know where he come from and then know his creators, mm -hmm. he would learn that his creators are truly people who really worked on themselves, mm -hmm. worked together to make something great, made a good life and then made him, and then he would understand why he is the way he is mm -hmm. in regards to maybe his discipline, the food that he eats, his exercise routines, or just the stuff he does, he would understand that his parents aren't normal, they're somewhat special. Mm -hmm. Could he then, or she then realize that with the help of who's about that, maybe I am a golden child. Okay, that, that I hear your reasoning. Okay, um, let's put it this way. Pana Baryanun is a, a child that is of that caliber, all right? What makes him is that he has machuzat. Okay, machuzat is one of the things that he has in his being, yeah? Machuzat is the liquid gold. Do you understand? Yeah, so a golden child has this liquid gold which allows him to traverse certain realms and open certain things. That's the one. That's one of the main reasons why we have to work together to help him out. And and he's as he's always stipulated, love and unity will free me, because once he's free, he will be able to touch those particular individuals. Okay, who will be able to open the gateway? See, there's certain things that he has to put into place. Okay, in certain areas, in order to open a gateway for those who are ready to make the transition. You see what I'm saying to the other side, you know, or travel to the other realms. But he can't touch us, you're with me, while in being incarcerated. Or should I say, he, the level of being able to touch us is limited. You see what I'm saying? But through the books, he's touching us as well. Because we're now make, making a mind link to him. You see, by way of the books. Okay, now, are you prepared as a golden child to go through these tribulations that he's going through? Asking me. I'm asking you. I'm not a golden child. No, I'm saying if you are a golden child, or you say you may feel like you might be one because of a certain level that you might start realizing. Oh no, I'm saying the golden children. Oh right, right. Golden, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, well, as as a golden child, there'll be certain trials and tribulations, certain you have to go through, or you will be taken through. And this is why our teacher is who he is, is because he has endured. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and he's, and he's taught us so much of how to get to the level of being able to endure. Because then that's when, he, as he explained, you will receive the crown of life. Yeah, that crown of life is eternal life, eternal existence. So it's not of, about, yeah, you know, as, as we've explained in um, the three types of love, you can be helpful in the mission, you can put loads of money into the mission, etc. But if you don't have divine love, if you don't able to help a brother, fellow, sister, and raise yourself up in degrees, just see what I'm saying, where you 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 literally will probably have nothing, penniless, yeah, and still have divine love. Are you prepared to go through that sacrifice as a golden child? Not you. I'm just saying, as a golden child, that's that's the level golden children 
go through, do you get what I'm saying? And are put through certain tests. So it's not a thing, oh, I'm a golden child, I can open vortexes. You're put through certain tests. And this is the test that he has had to endure for over 22 years. But I don't think you're answering my question. Okay. I, I hear all that, yeah. but I just want to know, mm. can they know? Because based on everything... Okay, you said yeah, that, yeah, they, they, will, they will be revealed. It'll be revealed to no, them. So, yeah. so you're telling me the master teacher has to reveal it to them. They can't know themselves. They won't know because... Even, ba even based on everything you said, with their parents being special, mm -hmm. worked on themselves, mm -hmm. them realising that because of my parents, I'm now somewhat special and I don't feel the same as everyone else. Mm -hmm. And in turn potentially discovering Rusa but and in turn also realizing that they have to go through some sort of struggles and turmoil. Yeah. With all that being they said, will eventually start to realize they are golden child. Yeah. Okay. But it still has to be confirmed to them. Just like by how the master teacher. Exactly. And also by like for instance, I'll give an example. When you hit when um he had Yanun, the etheric being, come to him, yeah, he came at Yanun came to him first as a as a thought. You with me? And then he he was walking. This this is like the different stories that you read um, about him in the Akasha records and other scrolls, like the man from Planet Risk, how he met him one dark night, etc. He says, whenever you need me, just call on me. So as time went on, he started to begin to realize who he was by way of this supreme being telling him bit by certain information. He was also told to go to Egypt. He was also told to go to certain parts of Africa. Do you see what I'm saying? To learn from certain elders. You with me? Who taught him about himself and his abilities? Um, he went into Manchester. He met ex certain extraterrestrial beings. So there was a grooming and an education that comes with it. And eventually, then you start to realize who you are. Not saying that you want to take that responsibility because they can't force you to take that responsibility. You see what I'm saying? He tried to deny who he was several times. He's like, no, nah, man, I'm not this. I want to be along with the, the guys who run and go to the parties and stuff like that. But every time they pulled him back, they said, this is your mission. You see what I'm saying? Yeah? So that's that's it. That's so eventually they'll get to know. All right. Does anyone else have a question? I've got that three more. Far away until... Um, uh, does can anyone I, have a question? Yeah, can I ask yeah, what, is, you? Is it on the same lines? Is it on the same lines? <laughs> yes, mine is. Okay, okay go, on, go ahead. You're talking about the, the golden children, but when I started my journey, they talked about the 144,000. People keep okay. talking about this on the golden yeah. age. Is that similar to what you're saying as the golden children, the 144,000? Look, let me find um, the golden child and then <laughs> I'll read for you exactly what he's explained. <laughs> Right, so the golden children, um, this is from Revelation to the Nawapians, part of the way, the golden children. Lekum, your Haradu children are really not you. They only come through your DNA. The golden children started their final incarnation into chosen persons. So, so it's, it, that, that, that there tells you specifically, they're chosen, yeah? In 1973 AD on up to 2003 AD over a 40 year span of time. No, not all Kharadu children, not even Nagaru Kharadu Negro children, only selected ones. Not as many as you would think. They don't know who they are themselves. They may feel strange, not of this Kawat planet or cosmos. Many have great Sakhamat powers to learn they see things with a third eye and inner vision. Many separate from others and appear to others to be mentally unbalanced and are called nuts, insane, crazy, strange, different, or loners. They range in all ages between that time that the last was born, 2003 AD. Don't be fooled and don't fool yourself into thinking you are a golden child or you gave birth to a golden child. You may be one or may have given birth to one, don't claim it or force it. It started with females who in turn gave birth to males so that these two would be brawn, drawn together. Yeah, that goes back to the soulmates thing about being drawn together to birth golden children or wahu kharad, one child. 
because a male and female has birthed one golden child, one golden child does not by far mean all their offspring will be golden children. They're not Ladud born in one place on the Kawak planet, yet they all have or each has to be activated by touch and tone by Pa Nabab Yanun. They are also called star children and are very gifted. Many have been altered by Janas, sex, Batal, food, Masak, music, habits, loss of their etheric link to the Achahu, oversouls, who sent them here. Smoking, drinking, lust, doing things to their bodies, tattoos, piercing tongues, and other body cutting and distortions, chemicals on skin, hair, bleached hair, and colored contacts. Why, you may ask? Because the way the sunlight touches them and affects their being inside and out, outside in. For you see, if your hair is chamem black in lawan color, it attracts the sun's rays. If you bleach or change pa lawan, the color, to something lighter, as you know, the sun's rays are deflected from bright or light colors. If you deform your khatad body, the weight, speed, and time, the system is altered because the growth of a new demand blood the cells, the whole system of rebirth in the physical body is changed by any and all alterations. This applies to the golden children as well. If not a star child, it does not matter. Yet if a golden child, it does matter. So there's a, there's a differentiation between a star child and a golden child. Okay, my sister? If it is already done, it can be corrected. All right, so there's, the, there's another part to the thing. It can be corrected. Sleeping with the wrong humans also has an effect on golden children. Not all Nuwapu Nuwapians are golden children. Yet, all Shahasu people on this planet, regardless of Salah race, can be saved by them when the time comes. And they are, listen to that part clearly, and they are in Wu Nuwap. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Would you like to be, for me to read further? Yeah, it, um, kind of. So, but do you know about the hundred and forty-four thousand? When they keep talking about, is that chosen ones? Is, right. that, is that is that is that the that, same of what you're saying? That that in our teachings, the hundred forty-four thousand were the ones that were being prepared from the nineteen seventy all the way to present to be able to um, give birth to golden children. Do you see what I'm right. saying? Or the golden child. One, right. one, of, one, one or either of those children that were being raised within Wu Sabat would have given birth to a golden child. Right. You understand? But as, as, as what happened was when they raided the land or when disgruntled parents took their children out of the community, unbeknown to them, that potentially could have been a golden child. So one of the missions of Wu Sabat by way of Panabab Yanun, is to find these golden children, okay, and bring them back to Wu Sabah. Okay, so right. that's one of our missions. So, you know, what you're saying there, the 144,000, it ties into the, your revelations and, and other um, cultures that speak about certain people that will be raised. But essentially, when you add up the numbers, you're actually dealing with the number nine. And what the master explained in an update, I'm going to try and find this. There's quite a few updates that he's given us over the years, but essentially, there's also 144,000 beings or 144,000 experiences that certain beings will have that will also make up the 144. Some of them may not be in the physical either, some of them may be in the spiritual realm waiting for that transition. Right, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Can I, can I get back to that question about yes, um, yes, Ivana yes. Ashok? Mm -hmm. um, I was saying, how are we um, trying to attain, um, you know, uh, Ashok? How, how are we going about perfecting that? How we go about perfecting yeah, the reason, Ashok? The, yeah, how are we going? What, what, what things would you say that we need to do to... Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. The mask, Parnabal Yanun has given us a lot of instructions. Okay. If if we really are practicing our shuk, 
we have to listen first and foremost to what he instructs us to do because that's also our shock. If we're saying we love this being, yeah, whatever he teaches us and guides us to do, we should be doing it out of our shock. So one of the things he's told us to do is gather together. Oh. Yeah? So. In practicing our shuk, we have to gather together, pray together, chant together, because what happens is then the etheric energy or light that's in us starts to shine bright. And those beings that we refer to as Parnatharu, okay, will be able to see their children. But right now we are sporadically in different places on the planet. And even though we're mind linked to some degree, we also have to come together physically in order for our we to come, become one being one body and then become one craft oh, sure. so it's, so okay. uh, yeah so so pra oh, practicing our shuk is first and foremost listening to the being that's teaching us about our shuk mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so when 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 um when a master says um that our shuk is <laughs> it's tender and it's patient right mm. um how do you how does one kind of, unless it's just it's just works for each and everybody differently but how does one get that balance of uh how how, uh, how can i how much patience how much time how much <laughs> you know and not only that but how how patient mm. can you and tender can you be towards another um that perhaps doesn't demonstrate that same because the master said mm. to be that way toward all Sabaeans, but in hypothetics, suppose <laughs> another Sabaean. I, 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 know you, I know what you're trying to say. I put, you know what I do? This is my own personal journey on this and my own personal reasoning. You can take it and apply it. Um, or, or, you know, I just look at Pana Bab Yanun and then also look at Pana Tharu. Because okay. if you think about it, right, Pana Tharu, Right now, why you are in this abode and mm -hmm. in existence right now, they're feeding us natural mm -hmm. ether energy. They're feeding us intuition. They're feeding us lots of different things. Some of us may be cut off or not have it or is trickling through to some of us. But when you open yourself up and truly accept that Panatharu, Panababiyanun, your ancestors are real by way of your mother, your great grandmother, mm -hmm. your mother's mm -hmm. mother, all the way up. They're all oh. real. They're all in your DNA. That's why he's, you see the things that he told us to study, DNA, mm -hmm. epigenetics, quantum mm -hmm. physics, etc. It makes you come into the true reality that this is real, which gives you a stepping stone into mm -hmm. having our shock. Okay. okay. You see what I'm saying? Totally. But honestly, I, I mean... If we can gather at any time and we're having events, etc., mm -hmm. for those who are family and for those who want to become part of the Sabian family, come mm -hmm. and gather, get to know mm -hmm. each other. You see what I'm saying? Become more sure, oh. which you know means sticky. So oh. <laughs> okay. All so right. Okay. okay. Ashuk. <laughs> Ashuk is an altar. Rahuba. Rahuba Zama. Talking about coming together. Meaning physically, mm. so therefore physically beaten to come together, right? Well, let me put let me put this another. Uh, uh, let me no, 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 before I uh, know line, 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 yeah, line. So I was saying all this technology stuff, yeah, which kind of is all right for now. Yeah, obviously people are tuning in and mm -hmm. at home and tuning in. Yeah, now all parts of the world as well. So, so I'm just saying, like, in terms of the physicality of the meeting up and so if you're talking about technology now that's given us the avenue yeah to be able to tune into classes etc yeah. that's a help it does help people i, I see you stephanie uh, i'm coming yeah I, that's that does help to a certain degree yeah. and people's circumstances doesn't allow them to travel every day or every weekend to classes etc or family gatherings yeah. what we're saying is that we've put there's a we have created a venue and a place where we can all gather so at least within that month yeah. at least once a month twice a month you see what i'm saying yeah. plan your your life ahead or plan around whatever but 
Wu Sabat should be really your 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 your, your, your yeah your living thing. Yeah. Your end goal is to live Wu Sabat. Your so, end goal is to wake up and do your chance. You know what I'm saying? So, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Say all that. Mm -hmm. There's two. I'm saying me. I'm saying it's not physical. No, because obviously physical. When you say when you see people physically, mm. when you see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. It's possible, it is because let me before I know I know but I want to um interject there. One of the things about meeting up physically as well is that what um the, the neuroscience of Wusa Bat explains, and when you go and research into neurogenesis, one of the things I've gathering together is that it creates neurogenesis. You actually grow new neurons. That's my exact point. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's your exact point. Okay, yeah. So for instance, um, we've got, I mean, we're walking in a park, for instance, for this fundraising that we did the other couple of you know months ago, that generated a, a, a bond. You see, you create an etheric bond amongst each other as well when you gather together. And that etheric bond is gives you the opportunity to talk about certain things that you may not feel comfortable talking about. You with me? But if we're family and we're not judgmental, that's another thing about divine love, Ashok is that you're not judgmental about what a person is going through. If anything, you're supposed to help those people to be, be become better. You with me? Because you have that foundation, you have that strength to carry that individual. So it's all about meet, meeting up together, attending family functions. You know what I mean? We've got our, our holidays that we celebrate in replacement of theirs. We have Easter or we, what we call um, Asat Asat Habab, Habab Lal. You know I mean our asset festival? We have Friendship Day. We have um, Children's Day that's coming up. You with me? We have um, Halloween, or we call it Ancient Ones Day. Okay, where we were supposed to then teach our children about our ancestors. So there are things that we put into place. Okay, that will, and we've got rituals that we can perform. You know I mean we also have um, Spiritual Night, where you can gather and raise your vibration and your density. Again, as stress. It's not the world that we're living in makes it difficult. But if you're living and applying Wu Sabat, your ancestors, if as long as you trust in them, and the thing is, you got to build that foundation of trust and then know that they're real. If you still like um, as the master explained, if you doubt them, they'll move away. You have to know in your being and make that decision that they're real to you. Just like your grandmother, who may have transitioned, is real. She was real in this realm. She's real in the other realm. It's just in a, in a different state of existence. Yeah, and they all, all of them, are guiding and protecting you, even though you may not be aware or consciously aware of it. They're there, and I only say this from my experience. I say that from uh, I can even probably echo it for other brothers and sisters who may have had the same kind of experiences, in a sense that whatever they've done. They thought they couldn't get there, but somehow something came through. Do you know what I mean? And they were able to complete it. And the more you start to realize these are the miracles, not this good character coming in a cloud of smoke and then, you know, saying that everybody's saved, etc. Not that Jesus character. The real saviors are yourself linking in with your ancestors. Do you see what I'm saying? And teaching your children about your culture. That's what's going to save you. Uh, there's a book called The Bridge to Salvation, which the master has put out, and he says, you know, your children are your salvation. What What's the point of being able to not offer anything to them as a form of culture that the master teacher has been telling us to embrace and instill in, in our children? All they're going to do is go back into the world. The, the, the young child here asked the question. He asks, why do we call ourselves sabians? You with me? Because that's the, one of the only conscious choices you make the rest is already being decided for you. It's already been multi, what's the word? Um, what's the word they use? Multiple choice. Because it's all about their world. You with me? It's not about our world. We have to create and shape our world. And this is what this Wu Sabat's about. Okay? So I hope that answers questions online, on Zoom, etc. And um, any more questions, we'll probe on that. Zamal, um, Stephanie has her hand up. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> Go ahead, Stephanie. What's your question? Go back, go back. I wanted to ask in terms of, um, so say if you're a very like sensitive person, as in like sensitive to energies and uh, very sensitive to like P 
people when you're like around them for longer periods of time, almost like mm. you sense them. Mm. How would you go about building up your psychic defenses? Because obviously everybody's on their journey. And um, it, sometimes the, the disagreeable in you will respond to other people's mm. disagreeables. Mm. And because everybody's on their journey, mm. it's not like it's something that can be stopped. It's just kind of like we all kind of just live with each other. But mm if you're more sensitive to it than another person, somebody else might be able to just dismiss it. But for you, it might cause a whole turmoil within your entire life. So how would you go about building up a certain level of uh, psychic defense in order to make sure that you can communicate and uh, commune, commune, um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be around other people Mm -hmm. without feeling like uh, your disagreeables are crushing you? (laughs) Right, Does that make sense? Right. No, no, it makes it makes sense what you're saying. And I'll say that the, the foundation of that is Wusaba and Patarat. Studying these these books. Remember, I said study. Don't just read it just because it's it's words. Study each word and how it impresses on your soul and your on your being. I was I will start there. And then at the same time, um within Patarat, actual facts and master secrets, there's the science of the breath book. OK, he, there's an actual practice in there where if you're around other individuals or people within even the, in the tribe who may cause that kind of uncomfortability, if, if they're around you, you can create an energy field around you that will protect you, you see what I'm saying, from that negative energy that you may be feeling. And also part of that, too, is that knowing what feeds um, what the master refers to as the feed in the forces. So you, within us, we have our generations in our DNA, in our blood, yeah? And we, they're linked to us etherically as well. So some of the times when you're in an environment where another person may agitate you, it may not necessarily be that person. It may be the energy that you're picking up from that person. And that energy is also their mental field and their mental state which is projecting. And that mental state or that mental field is sometimes ancestors, relatives who can cause that. You with me? Or, you know, especially if you're in a relationship with somebody, sometimes one relative or ancestor, depending on the mood you're on, they can manifest and cause a disagreement in your relationship because they may not like the other person. You with me, or they 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 may be infatuated with the other person. It, it it can go both ways, so it's all about learning how to create, like you said, the psychic self defense. So through part of our actual facts and the master secrets, there are many different um, jewels, okay, and nuggets that you can pick up, which will allow you to have that mental pr- um, protection and also emotional protection around you, so that the, those forces can't feed into you. Yeah, and in the uh, the breath book or the signs of healing, in the breath book especially, it talks about how you can create a, a green aura around you and how that will repel those negative energies. So I hope that helps. So if you have um, the breath book, I'll seek it out and it will give you a lot of information on how to even like energize your water. Um, there's certain things in there about how to um, be able to do certain breathing and and communicate with um, your ancestors on the other side. There's there's many different practices in there, on in the breath book. I hope that answers your question. Tao tak tao tak zama. I'm tak athira for zama tak. Any other questions on Clubhouse or Zoom? No question is too big or too small. If I don't know, one of our brothers or sisters will step in. Zamal, did you cover the question from Jose Hotel? Matabel? No, no, I didn't. Could you okay. could you it ask says, that, please? Yeah, it says I keep see seeing this numbers on the clock for two years now. 11, 11, 22, 22, 1, 11, 3, 33, 4, 44. Mm. What's the culture? science or spirituality around these events okay um these numbers start to appear when you are growing 
in your own essence. The true essence of you has started to awaken. And because now what's taking place is that you are going into a field uh, and uh, awareness and um, activation environment where you've been activated, you will start to see these numbers prevalently coming up because time itself is moving or expanding and you're expanding with it. So these numbers are like, uh, how can I say, synchronicities of events that will, are taking place or things that you may be experiencing. And it's happening to me as well. You know, you, it's, um, Seken has it all the time. Many people do have the experience because you're, you're actually raising your level of vibration. And these numbers, especially the two numbers that are, you know, rep rep replicate each other, 11, 11, 21, 21, 22, 22. It happens to different people, but it's essentially you are moving into those different realms of existence. Do you see what I'm saying? And your consciousness is expanding. So that's why you see you start to see those numbers. I'm sure Seken's got more on it or one of the other brothers, but um, I'm limited on that because I haven't read it in quite a while. But yeah, that's part of the answer. Is it like binary codes? Because um, our um, names have numbers attached to it as well, doesn't it? Um, when we, we're talking about our, our birth signs or Leo, um, Sagittarius and stuff like that. Is that, mm -hmm. is that the same? Um, it's similar, but remember, Leo, Sagittarius, and these are pseudo, um, uh, what you call it, sciences. They're not actually real sciences because you're a combination of different star signs, you know, I mean, from your parents and your parents, parents, etc., going back 30 um, relatives. So within those, the makeup of you, you, you will have a dominant sign, but then you also have um, other sub signs that also influence the way you are at particular times of the day, months, years, etc. You understand? So it, it can be similar, but essentially um, dimensions are something that these, these numbers are representing. So you're moving into different dimensional states. And being that you're moving to these different dimensional states, these numbers are just representing dimensions. You with me? Because time is literally collapsing into a new paradigm because we moved in from one paradigm into a different paradigm shift. So these just numbers are just correlating and representing what's taking place. It's a different shift. We're going into a different, or we have gone into a new paradigm where um, planets, even planets now are moving into a different solar system and other planets are coming into this solar system and Earth is actually moving into a different um, field of existence. I'll bring that up. It's in um, dimensional shift. Um, yeah, you know, they were talking about like the keratin effect, that this the solar flash is going to happen soon. And a lot of people are talking about this solar flash is going to hit and, you know, the X factor, your, your um, dormant DNA is going to um, awaken. Um, mm. what, what do you guys think about that? And do you have anything... Um, to touch on with that um, concept of um, the um, solar flare and carotene effects that's going to come, I think it's end of November or beginning of December. Yeah, um, solar flares or sto solar storms, normally the earth goes through, uh, sorry, the sun goes through its own biorhythm, which happens around roughly about 11 years. Okay, it goes into a, 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 a new birth, as it were. So mm -hmm. what happens is when it emits these solar flares, okay, the different radiations that come from it can affect weather and can also affect the, the, the individual being. Now, being that we are Sabians and are being taught to raise our, our vibrational frequency and many others around the world who are recognizing that we're moving or shifting into a new paradigm, okay, those messages from the universe can be encoded in their DNA. You with me? And, no, and, and, explain that a bit more, sorry. So, so literally, you see when the sun um, gives off radiation, which we call light. Yeah. The sun can communicate to you. Um, earthly um, bodies, or sorry, celest celestial bodies can communicate to you or communicate by way of their energies, which we refer to as light. 
Yeah. yeah. So this light messages that comes into this realm, some of it can be encoded or un unencoded or unraveled by your DNA as a message, as a light message. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And only way that sometimes it can actually affect the person if they haven't raised themselves to a certain level. So they, they can either go mentally unstable or it can affect them physiologically. You, should, mm -hmm. you understand? So yeah. what, what the whole point of this boost about information and the teachings and also the practices of eating healthily, um, do you know what I'm saying, meditation, all of these things is because you're raising yourself to a higher vibratory um, level so that you can accommodate these light messages that are coming from the sun or the different um, various different celestial bodies because because yeah, a lot of us um started stop eating meat and it because most people yeah, like exactly. a lot of us went to vegan um, exactly yeah. exactly yeah that was so, the messages coming from the sun is that what you're saying exactly precisely that's the sun and other bodies celestial bodies it's not just the sun but right. sun being a, our parent in this solar system yes it communicates to us and we are children of the sun. So being that we have that ability to actually communicate with the sun by way of our inner sun, which is known as the solar plexus, mm -hmm. yeah, we are getting light messages, which can then be actually um, read by our DNA and then conveyed to us in the form of consciousness. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and so this is going to wake up, wake up some of our dormant DNA for some exactly, of us. Exactly, exactly. Only if you have raised yourself to that level. Only if you're practicing, because it can just—it's like a car. If you have a car and you don't maintain it, yeah, no matter what you try, no matter how it, what do you mean you try to restart the car, it won't start. You with mm -hmm. me? So you have to maintain the car, put the right type of fuel in the car, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in order for that car to make his journey you with me yeah. yeah and 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 um you know work effectively so let me just find um the part about the planet earth how it's shifting okay so most don't know i read from verse 24 yeah verse 24 of actual sorry patarak the dimensional shift most don't know that they read their holy books, yet don't really read what it says or question what it really means out of fear. Verse 25, you see, it's all about dimensional shifts or cycles. Each of the created or grafted races is of a dimensional rate related to the very planet. With the 24,000 year cycle and the 26,000 year precession of the equinoxes, which will complete another cycle, 12, 21 or 21st of December, 2012, as the planet shifts, each race is supposed to shift with it. It relates to your evolvement and involves your DNA as placed in a humanoid as HAR1 type on your DNA strands. Okay, so that's the HAR1 gene. It is actually located on the end of the 20th chromosome of your 46. By the way, this information was revealed before they found out about the HAR1 gene. Okay, so just, just giving you a little clue as to what who we're dealing with when we're talking about partner Babianum being a supreme being. Okay, it links you to your ancestors and a parallel universe and a planet in a different harmonic portal. Yeah, so all beings or beings that have been somehow linked to celestial, have a celestial origin, they all have an ancestors and are linked to certain harmonic portals. This is the reason why we're speaking the language, Ms. Batia. It's not just a language of words, but it's a language of tones. And being able to um, raise our tones and our hormones to a certain level will allow us to be able to accommodate those different dimensions that we're, being, we're moving through into. So our one that we're linked to is called risk. Okay, Yours is called Razak, risk. It involves time portals, or gates and dimension portals. Again, going back to when I was explaining that master teacher has to touch certain beings because they're gatekeepers. And those gatekeepers will be able to open these portals and these gates. All right, first, verse 33. All of these facts and more are part of a role in the principle underlying the process of ascension. Dimensions and harmonic multiverses are linked to understanding quantum physics. 
everything is vibrational frequencies. Um, trying to get to the part. Now, Nuwapians, understand this, that this universe is composed of eight harmonic tones or worlds, as in music scales, each note of an octave. Each harmonic world is composed of eight dimensions. All of these dimensions exist in the same space and time as does light and sound, yet they operate and appear separately because of the variant particle pulsation rate of the atoms or cells. Uh, da, 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 da. Jumping to... So... Sorry? Big one? Uh, no, I want to find this first before. Sorry to keep you. I'm just going to try and find it. Um, there's a part it mentions about the earth moving through the different dimensions. Um, okay, I think this is it. Right. We've been using, um, it's talking about how they can extract DNA. Um, this is what this is referring to. So with this, here you go. Um, verse 74. Now, in order for you to time travel or transport, that will be teleport you from one place to another, wireless transport, we need this record. That's again talking about your um your ascending masters and descending masters. And what second was explaining that everything is recorded, your hands, your feet, etc. Everything's recorded on this disc, and it is stored on dice disc or crystals. So with that information, you can be transported through app formation space, time, and then imported back information and reconstructed from your first moment of existence and up to whichever age in your life up to now can be transported. And all of you and your thinking will be wherever. Only the exact moment will change because it's a new moment in your life from where you were experiencing it to where you arrived. We must split the atom of time by anti-atom and before it, become, it can become adjusted and cell likewise. At its center is a program must be implanted for the moment to be balanced. I hope you humanoids can understand this. We've been using many of your Earth's years to come and go and overcame age and death, even correct things in our lives. We would have done differently while during transport, stop the disc at a point in life and edit it. Um, each planet is linked to each other as Earth is to risk or Razak. Each can do this by magnetically drawing into its morphogenetic field particles from the unified of energy for each dimension. So as worlds cross by, here it is, verse 85. So as worlds cross by energy gates, so that's hence the, the gates being opened by these golden children, okay? These energy gates, beings can then, can be seen at times, even visit from one world to the next. As a planet pulls in the frequency pattern or tone of the next higher dimension into its morphogenetic field or human body vibrations or four fields as the planet has ley lines of energy, so does the human body have matrix energy lines. A morphogenetic field is a field of energy that created form to material things, matter as in atoms and cells. So to try and cap it off, this is all why Wusabat is here. We have a being that is trying to get us to raise our levels so that we can actually be transported, okay, or move into other energy dimensional fields, okay? But... You know, it's not just as easy as, oh, I'm going to chant and hum and, and then that'll be it and then I can move on. It's a lot more complex than that and it's involving all of these things. Um, all right, so can I see you, brother? You have a question? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to remind everyone to be using a shook and be courteous because N Brown has had her hand up for a very long time. So oh. if people could not just jump in and raise their hand when they would like to ask a question, please. Oh, tell, 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 tell her for that, Zamal. Um, N Brown, I see you. And then can I come to you after? Yeah, yeah go on, N Brown. I apologize for the long explanation. <laughs> go on. 
No worries. It's, it's okay. Um, a quick question. Somebody mentioned uh, some tests. I think she said 24 tests that we were supposed to be here to pass or something. That's right, um, yeah. I don't know if you could touch on that or if it's too long, maybe give us a link. Where we can watch a video or something. Are you on um are you on the platform? No. On the on the moose um on, on our platform, our tele um telegram, not telegram, um WhatsApp platform. No. Could you would you like to be added? Yes, I sent my number, but I was never added. Okay, send your number again. Okay. Uh, or back channel me or something of that nature. Okay. Um, and then what I can do is when we add you, I'll post that particular reading from um regarding that question all right thank because, you because it is quite a bit to um expand on okay uh, thanks Jamal, I, I think i tried to add you and um some people have their telegram set to where you can't add them oh they yeah have to um like you have to be requested or something but um i've also put the telegram link in the chat so either way if you if you're able to join the telegram group we can and that as well. All right, tell us, tell us. Okay, thanks. I'll put my number for WhatsApp because that works better for me. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, good. thanks. Okay. Yeah, go on. Uh, right, this, this to, uh, the if any last burning questions because um, saying, oh, this is where well yeah. nice and sweet, but how does one become active in Wunu Up? And obviously, you need to be active within classes as well. I mean, like, what's the and go for this because we, we, we come people have class and then it's almost like we ask questions, question, question, question. But as one become active, we need to that. Well, Wu's about our doctrine is a motivator and an activator. That's what nine ether is. Nine ether is a motivator and an activator. So unless you have got to the um, reality that this is for you. And you want to be seriously, you know, part of it and live you live your life and woosa bat and etc. It has you have to be motivated. You with me? And like I said, there's I mean, we could go, it's a whole different class, but it's essentially learning to find the real you, the true you. So with the DNA, you talk about. Yeah, the, the DNA you have, remember, you have not just your DNA. You have your ancestors, your relatives' DNA, and sometimes they can be the hindering force behind why you don't do certain things. Mm. You have me. But if you made that conscious decision mm. to say, you know what, I want to know for me, I want to be a Sabian, you made that conscious decision. Yeah. yeah? And it's about, that's what Wusa about is. Yeah. Conscious doctrine. Mm. So I mean, that conscious doctrine. Mm. Yeah. Being like in, in the kind of stuff there. Mm. I'm saying if you're not active for 20 years, mm. what makes you be active in 10? You know, it's, it's as the master put it, not everyone is activated at the same time. Okay. You know what I mean? You could be out in, in the world for, you still know about the master teacher. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying you're in. You're in. You're in. Even then, some people are stuck at certain levels. You know what I mean? Because as the master explained, that there's different gates. Okay. And these gates, is where some people choose to reside in, and it could be gate of religion, it could be a gate or whatever. But within these gates, unless you're able to pass those through those gates yeah. and then realize that you are that God that's supposed to take responsibility and then respawn and, and then become that sun that everybody um, gravitates towards, yeah. it, it literally becomes dormant. Yeah. So you have to activate it. And the way to activate it is be partake in the things that we do. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And and consciously make that decision. It's all about that mental spark. Yeah. You know with me? Because then that you walk is yeah, yeah, you activate brain nutes. Okay. You know, neurogenesis is all about activating brain nutes. And when you activate those brain nutes, yeah. those brain nutes activate your ancestors. Yeah. The chanting activates your ancestors. Yeah. You with me? Who will work through you? So it's all about making that conscious decision. Okay. Zach Phillips, I see your hand raised. This will be the last question because I am conscious that we've gone over. Um, Thank you. I've got five more minutes. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Five minutes and then that's it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go I just want to go on, go on, Zach. <laughs> I want to, oh, first of all, I want to say just thank you because just having these meetings and just hearing you guys share what you're sharing is very rare. 
because I felt very lonely by myself for a very long time. I mm. thought, thought like this, and I've had a lot of downloads for a very long time. So mm. luckily I had I met my husband at a very young age, and I was able to share a lot with him. I'm a bit croaky because it's quite emotional. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you so much for the, just the, the, the information and how freely you allow us to ask questions and stuff like that. I really, really do appreciate it. I've been coming, I think it's my fifth time. So yeah, I'm just you, slowly you, you, learning. Yeah, I, I remember you when you first started. So yeah. <laughs> so I will be coming a bit more. I just I just got to take my time because I've been in religion. I don't want to, you know, just jump straight into something. I'm going to just take my time and then, you know, soak everything in. I want to ask a question because I had an experience when I was 13 years of age. Mm -hmm. I met, I met myself. I met a carbon copy of myself. Okay. And I want to ask if we have clones, if there are clones of us yeah, yeah um um because i'm conscious of time um yes we do have clones we have um as the master is explaining the man from planet risk if you are able to get your hands on that we have seven clones not all of them are in this in this country or they all dotted around the world and not all of them ex look exactly like you either but mm -hmm. they all share the same morphogenetic field and oversoul you with me so right. essentially what that means is that if, for instance, one of those clones of yours doesn't make it in Wusabat, the masters will pick another child within that clone um, composition and they will guide that child to Wusabat. Right. You with me? But you do have clones. He has clones himself. Right. So do, yeah. you, do you know the reason why that clone like, will, will connect? For any reason, well, you, you are connected, you're connected by the morphogenetic field and by your oversoul. It's just that sometimes, just like you are now conscious and aware of who you are, you are now in charge of that, you are more in control of that oversoul than the others who are not aware of who they are. You with me? So, basically, right. as you grow in, in, in awareness, and let's just say one or two others start to grow in awareness, mm. you all become mind linked. And the eventuality is that if if one of you do make it, you're all linked. This is what dimensional shift is talking about here. There's mm -hmm. a morphogenetic field, you see, and that field of energy is linked to all of your aspects of you. Your etheric self, your soul self, your mental self is all linked into the ether, into this morphogenetic field. Mm -hmm. You understand? But yeah. you have to be the one that's drive in the driver's seat. If right. you want to make it, but essentially, if you make it, they will potentially make it too. Anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but you are not responsible. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, right, that ends our class. We have gone over. Um, I apologize. I've missed anyone's questions or didn't get to anyone's questions in time. But you know, um, we we got a lot to cram in in that space space of time. I'd like to say Taokum Lahe Yatwe. Thank you for coming. Um, please join, please ask members who you know or people that you know to join all the same vision. Please join on our platforms like Zoom or Clubhouse, find out more information, visit the store, Nashat, support the store. We have events that are coming up also. If you want to be seeking to become a Sabian, go into unitedsabianworldwide.com and register there and then also link into Nashat. Um, .co.uk where you can actually become also seek to become membership there and there'll be a certain um, guidelines and things that you can actually read and get to know what we're all about so again I'd like to thank you you have made the class as usual without you I'll be just sitting here you know I mean talking to myself so I appreciate your time have a wonderful weekend enjoy the rest of it and a blessed week what do you for now Moisa? Thank you. What do what do? 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 What do?